What's going on, guys? Today's podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. And if you go to manscaped.com forward slash RBP, you can get 20% off and free shipping on their new beard kit that I'm going to show you. Check this out. So you get all this cool stuff in the beard kit. I'm going to show you each piece one by one. First of all, the most important part is you get the beard trimmer itself. Now, the cool thing is you don't get a ton of these attachments like with every other beard trimmer. You lose half of them. This one, you can set the beard trimmer length with this dial. So you just have the one guard to worry about, which is beautiful because I always lose these. So that's the first thing. Second thing is you get the beard conditioner. You get beard balm. You get a beard brush. Wonderful. Um, and you get, let's see, beard oil. And the last thing is the beard shampoo. So you get all this. I'm going to show you on the website. If you go to the website, manscaped.com forward slash RBP, you can get go to new, new beard kit. Click on that. It'll show you exactly what you get. You get the scissors. You get the brush. You get all this stuff in the beard kit for $139, but you save 20% plus you get free shipping. So make sure you go to manscaped.com forward slash RBP or use code RBP at checkout to get the discount plus the free shipping. Guys, you won't regret it. This beard trimmer with the dial on here so you don't have all the attachments is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> this is uh racist anonymous racist uh intervention <laughs> <laughs> holy fuck can you believe that shit yeah you're who said that cormier said you're racist right i don't think he actually said i'm racist but he kind of made the implication that i didn't know what i was talking about and he didn't like that i was talking about black versus white and blah 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 it just seemed that was the implication he never actually said the words he's being racist but he was more uh confused at what i was saying and thought it was stupid but it would have been stupid if i was actually saying what he thought i was saying yeah so were you were you mike were you part of that conversation no you weren't there right no no i just saw ben Ben, paul and uh ben paul and samson yeah yeah, we were having a, we we're actually having a valuable conversation about longevity in the sport, and I was saying that we were. It actually came from the fact that we were talking about black guys seem to lift into their forties. Like you know, when you think of like, if you think of pro bodybuilders in their forties that are just still successful, they're all black. And you think of like um, Dexter, Cedric, Sean Roden. Like all these guys are Ronnie Coleman, like all these guys competed well into their forties. And uh, the the common factors there, you think it's a genetic thing? No. What, what, well, what I was saying is I can't think, I couldn't think of any white guys that like competed past 40. Yeah, not really. It was a, it was a silly conversation, but, but what I said was maybe the black guys were lifting into their forties because they were doing more pump and volume still with heavy weight. But yeah. they were doing like high intensity Dorian Yates style training. Yeah, I mean that's where mine goes right away. If that's racist too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> when you said it, that's so, why I asked. Like, what makes you think that? That's exactly where my mind goes. It's like they just train differently, you know. This is racist <laughs> anonymous. That's why we're here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Admitting you have a problem is the first step. You know, the interesting thing though, I, I, this is why I like having these conversations because I said uh, during that podcast, I said I couldn't think of a high intensity, low volume, black, like professional that was at the top. And people messaged me and said, David Henry and uh, Aaron Baker. And I didn't know that about, but I did know that about David Henry. I didn't know that about Aaron Baker though. Yeah. So that was interesting because Aaron Baker's got a crazy physique. So yeah. Paul, what's going on? You there? Can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You think you would have figured this out by now, right? I know it's been like a year. You on. <laughs> I think it's because he goes off and his girl, like his daughters use the computer. Yeah. Then he's got to get like reset. It's like she should be driving an 18 wheeler right now with that headset. (laughs) (laughs) We can't hear you, Paul. We still can't hear you. (laughs) God damn it. (laughs) Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, There you are. Ah, No racial, no racial slurs. Mike's on now. <laughs> Don't say anything racist. What did I say? No, it's fine. I um I spoke to Dennis James. 
uh, yesterday and he said he listened to it and he's like, I don't know what Chris is talking about, man. He's like, I'm going to have to give him shit when he's on the podcast next. It's so a... I was like, okay. What, so, what happened anyway? Someone messaged me about that. Uh, it, we just talked about it. it. Remember we were having the conversation on the podcast about black guys lifting into their forties. And that one of the reasons I thought they had that longevity is because they didn't do the high intensity training. Yep. It was more, uh, it was more uh, higher volume, lower intensity. Chris somehow gathered from that that I was saying black guys aren't strong. <laughs> it's obvious, obvious, to draw. obvious inference there, man. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know where that came from, but so I had to kind of make a correction and make sure everybody knew that that's not what I said. So I put that out, and then uh, now that's over. So oh. it's all it's all done with. It's crazy okay. how many people do that, though. Even just on the internet, you know what I mean, like. You think taking, people... th- 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 taking things out of context and like you're making your own, you're making up your own storyline, right? Like the yeah. shit you the shit you said or the set the shit that he said you said you didn't say at all. Well, it's what he it's what he heard, right? What he inferred from what you said. Yeah, but it's like that's you didn't was, say that. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It wasn't even uh, that it was taken out of context. It was just he heard something yeah. a, dif- a different way than what was actually said. His perception of it. Yeah, his perception of it. It's like I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Anyway, that is what it is. Got myself in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Kinda. Um, if, I, if I were you, I'd never make a video like that again. <laughs> don't bother. <laughs> let him, no, you know let him sit with it. Let him sit with it and stew. Fuck him. <laughs> it's funny. This, it's it's funny how people tiptoe around race. I got. I saw a couple comments uh, in that video that were like, "Hey, the easiest thing to do is just never talk about race again." And I'm like, "That's not the fucking answer." What are you talking about? <laughs> like I'm saying something completely benign. It has no emotion behind it. It's just a I also complete... think it's it's also a very naive thing to say that within different ethnic groups there can be different abilities and genetic affinities. Like to say yeah. that like the fastest people or the people that with you know distance sports and stuff like that have a high affinity to be black people is not racist. It's just an observation. Facts right. can't be racist. Well, I'm okay. not saying that there's something about that or why that data is such, but to say a factual thing that is like in numbers can be quantified is not can't be racist. Yeah. But it's well, also that's... like you're saying a positive thing. Like you're really good at this. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> it's not like even if it is racist, let's say whatever you want to call it, it's like it's a positive thing. So I don't know how that. Yeah, works in like I actually, I asked, around. You know, it's funny, Mike. I actually asked somebody that one time because we were talking about something. We were talking about something on the podcast, and I said something positive, and somebody said that's racist. And I said, "It can't be racist if it's positive." I posed that the question. Is more like, is that more like stereotyping? Then you know, yeah. well, why stereotyping can still be negative? Yeah, but I'm saying that's what that would be technically. Then right. So racist can only be bad. Yeah, it's only negative stuff. I guess so. I don't. I, you'd have to Google its definition. I don't think so. I think yeah. isn't racist like painting a broad brush over one race? I always thought it was like disliking someone because of you yeah know, whatever that, the background like, is, just based on the fact of their race. Yeah, that too. Yeah, I think when you're that's doing like a blanket statement, like you said, that's what I said. Well, anyway, like you know, going back to what you said, Ian, we do this all the time. Like even I even said it in my solo video. I said, you know, we talk about. Asian guys and how they always have great legs or yeah. Arab guys usually always have great backs or oh, by the way, can I interrupt? Have you guys, any of you guys watched the show, the physical 100 on Netflix? Yep. Yeah. Uh, the thing so, I haven't watched yet. These Korean dudes are fucking jacked, jacked man. They're, they're jacked. So jacked. The, one one girl, the one girl is fucking jacked. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Like a pro, a pro bodybuilder girl. Holy the pro bodybuilder guy looked good too. That one guy with the tattoos. Yeah. But yeah, that man, all these people like crazy legs, crazy like. Is it an interesting show though? I thought it was gonna be cheesy. No, it's amazing. It's awesome. Is it? Is the it ad, like the dubbing over with the translation is pretty horrible though. Oh, like, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's very, it's very mixed. But like, he's so he's so good. Oh my god, I love him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not what they They're say. very exact. <laughs> but no, like the challenges they do on it are like actually very good, like interesting feats of strength. Like that would be difficult for sure. So I'm gathering yeah. by Mike's comment that it's a Korean show that they've dubbed yeah. over. It's okay. Korean. A game yeah. show. Yeah, it's like a. I don't even know how we would call it, like cha- like a challenge game, like gladiator yeah, like, type oh, style. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like they got like a dancer, they got like bodybuilders, they got MMA guys, they got like a 
like just all realms of athletics. One of the guys right? on it's like yeah. an Olympic skeleton guy. There's Olympic wrestlers. Yeah. There's like professional rock climbers. Like so, you get like tons of crazy people get a different shit, and they all compete in like teams and individual like very strength and endurance based challenges. And they're like they're good challenges. They're not easy. The best was when they were like they all had to hang for as long as they could hang. You just see the meatheads dropping instantly right away, <laughs> <laughs> like torpedoes hitting the water. <laughs> no, but it's like cool how like different sports and things that they do express into like different strengths in these yeah. things. You know, yeah. Yeah. the guys that like anything that's grip related or stuff. The guys that have like climbing or like wrestling backgrounds kill everybody. You know, or like small girls sometimes would be like amazing at these grip challenges. You know. Okay. Speaking of speaking of challenges, I'm down to 257 today, but Ian. Wow. Sub I can see in your face. Sub 260. <laughs> yeah, I noticed yeah, you were looking thin. Paul saw me today. He's like, yeah, you look leaner. I can yeah. see it in your face. It's, yeah. the, it's the stem cells. They've already started working. I think, well, you do look a little younger. <laughs> was, yeah, your, was, your, was your stem cells like intravenous or did they like invasively? So I, did, like... I did three different kinds. Oh. Uh, we did intravenous. We did my kidneys. Well, four, sorry, four different kinds. We did intravenous, then we did uh, intravenous, intravenous into the kidney. Yeah. Then we did uh, one for an injury in my wrist. That was the most fucking excruciating thing. I've Listen, I've had one ailment. I had a gallbladder attack like in 2013 or something like that. I was laying on the floor in the emergency room, like in the fetal position, just like, uh -oh. uh, like just in total pain. Mm -hmm. They did this. It was the exact same pain. I was laying in bed, like just popping fucking Tylenols, like all day long, trying to get it to go away. But anyway, they did my wrist, and then uh, I got like cosmetic stem cell exosome therapy on my skin mm. to correct, like, see, like there's a pigmentation, like it's darker here. So I've always yeah. that's always bothered me. So they're trying to correct it. So mm -hmm. so, so I did all three. So far, all I feel is awesome sleep. Yeah. <laughs> That's something. That's, yeah, that is something. Yeah. No, but like, no, they told me, they're like, you're going to notice your sleep is better. I'm like, ah, whatever. I sleep horribly normally. Yeah. yeah. But since I've gotten back or since I did it, I've been having like 12 hour days just passed out cold, man. Like, like, like a bear, not even, I'm usually a light sleeper. So. Yeah. So far, that's good. And as far and my wrist starting to feel better now. So we'll see if the other stuff. The the skin is supposed to take like three to four weeks, and wow. uh, the kidney levels. I'm not gonna. No, I won't be able to say anything about that for probably a few months. Mm -hmm. But um, is this you have to do multiple treatments of this? Like, how does that work? So the kidney treatment is one treatment at a time. Like, we'll see how things go. Right. Same with the values. Yeah. Yeah, and then the intravenous, uh, they did 150 million stem cells. He said you can do that every six months. Most people do it once a year. Like anti-aging kind of thing? For anti-aging. Like, I guess Tony Robbins goes there every year and does it. Um, and there's a lot of hockey players, I guess, that do it in their off-seasons. Yeah. Um, so there's that. And then this, the skin treatment, though, he said I need three treatments to really make it work. Really? Yeah. But he said, I'll still get something from one treatment. So I just did the one what, treatment. What is it? What are they doing with that? Like, what is, they're injecting it there. They're like, so it's a what they do is, so I don't know if you, do you know what an exosome is? So I'm, yeah. I'm sure some science guys out there are going to fucking butch, like just shit on me like crazy. But this, <laughs> this is how I was prepared to make another video. <laughs> <laughs> so the way it was explained to me is the exosome is what <clears throat> holds the data and talks to your stem cell. Okay. So apparently my stem cells here don't know what they're doing anymore. And that's why the, there's hyperpigmentation. Okay. So okay. they inject, they do exosome therapy with stem cells so that they can reprogram it pretty much to, to be the proper pigmentation. Okay. So it's injected. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all over. It's, it's like Botox, I guess. Like doing Botox. Okay. Yeah. 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 But it's like a, a whole fucking shitload, like yeah. all across here. And then really? in here too. Is that I like, think a... my, I think I got my forehead fixed. Yeah. See? You got yours done? <laughs> you need it. You're still wrinkly. I what? It. You mean that's like <laughs> that's like five percent of what it was. That's as high as I can lift my eyes. But you yeah, got Botox? <laughs> if you go get this exosome therapy, Ian, it'll be gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, well, it was just funny, Paul. One episode you weren't on, I got it, but like the one side didn't catch well. So like my left <laughs> eyebrow would lift up and be wrinkly, and this side wouldn't move. <laughs> Look at people's <laughs> eyebrow. 
but yeah, we got, <laughs> we're all we're all good now. Yeah, yeah. He's, he looks good. He's the Botox guy on the podcast. He's the. Yeah. I'd like to get a little right here. I don't like that little crow's feet I got right yeah, there. I've had a dairy. It got rid of most of them. Almost. And your all forehead is all wiry too. No, I'm good with that. that that's just <laughs> that, that. just shows my my uh, my experience. Hey, this right here, I don't like. We took such a hard left. <laughs> and we're like we're all like hand each other. <laughs> that's what happens in these podcasts like wait a minute, let's go back to hard. Paul's wait, 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 i'm confused about paul's strategy here yeah so, I, need, I need to know your strategy so you have this crow, guy's just crow's, this, this crow's feet wait you have crow's feet and you need like the forehead lines forehead's fine i, I, I understand no, wait i want to know your forehead's, the, not fine. Your, your know forehead's like my forehead it's a pack of fucking hot dogs <laughs> what are you talking about this is this is right in line i'm okay with it though this is right in line with Paul's fucking coffee ordering. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> tell me, tell me why that the lines on your forehead don't matter. They don't bother me. I think it kind of shows my, you know, I should have a few lines, some fifty, but right here I don't like. So these, this too many lines. This okay. Just right here for it. If I could just get that done right there, yeah, I'd be, I'd be I, happy. I don't understand what he's saying. Like these, these age you differently than a forehead. They does. do. They See, do. But, I but this side not so much. Yeah. I think the reverse. I think some lines here are cool. No, yeah, you think so? I, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't like it myself. You have almost no lines, though. I know, Fuad, you got nice skin. Yeah, man, you're you have the smoothest skin by far out of any of us. You I drink a lot of olive oil coming up. <laughs> <laughs> That's Pro a secret, tip. Eh? Pro tip number one: Mediterranean <laughs> diet, baby. We're yeah, lots of olive oil. <laughs> I'm Italian. Why is mine shit? Because you're not. You're half French. Yeah, true. You're half French. Yeah. You don't eat like a real Italian diet. I got fucked with the French, with the French uh, genetics. Like, you don't do any of that kind of shit? I'm assuming you don't, you don't, you've never no, done I've it. had a, I've done it before. It just, like, you guys know it, it falls out, right? Or it's kind of, if you don't keep doing it, it kind of fucking dies. So I just haven't done it in a while. So Did just, you do it because your girlfriend wanted you to? Or are you like, I want to get rid of these wrinkles? That was probably a combination of both at the time, but yeah. I noticed, like, because I, I obviously have this resting fucking I'm going to kill you face, so I feel like I'm like always <laughs> I scowling. I was going to fix that. <laughs> yeah, no, but like I always felt like I always felt just like heavy here. But I noticed when I got the Botox, it almost like it like opened me up. I didn't feel as like all of a sudden heavy. Like, all, of a, all of a sudden, Mike's walking around the gym like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big smile. Yeah, <laughs> his forehead's lifted. He's like, yeah. Why is Mike's so happy all the time. <laughs> it's a new man. <laughs> Dr. Khan was actually trying to get me to go down to Dubai because of my shoulder. You should. He was like, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to get the thing replaced. It's fucked. L- listen, what's wrong honestly, with it? Listen, no cartilage left. Me too. If for, no, if, for nothing, if for nothing else, Mike, go for the fucking, take your girlfriend and go on vacation and get it done. Yeah, fuck. But the thing is, the last time he put stem cells on my shoulder, like I'm not, this isn't a knock on Dr. Khan knows I love him. I think he's great. He put that shit in there and I was in excruciating pain for yeah, a like month after. Like, yeah. Fuck, man. Like, no, like my whole arm was like numb. For I, how long? Like, for the whole, like, probably month and a half after I got it done. Oh, my God. I couldn't deal with that. Yeah. But I think it was, I think it was just, be, I don't think it was because of what he did. I think just like the, the capsule in my shoulder is such like a fucking irritated space. It's like, it just caused this like overcompensation of everything around it. So yeah. it's getting better now, but. I got a, I got an appointment with a surgeon for a consult. So, by the time I'm fifty, I plan on being just completely robotic. So. <laughs> every, every, joint, every major every, joint. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So, there's no plans for you to go to Dubai. Listen, the vacation. I've been there though. Have you? Yeah, I've been there twice, and I've been to Abu Dhabi once. Oh, too. Is that when you were bodyguarding for Drake, or just something else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bodyguarding. So did you guys party there at all and do any of the cool shit out there? Well, yeah, I mean, they did. They got a lot, were a lot of hanging out. It's actually an interesting question. Let me ask you. So you go to Dubai, and Drake is like, I'm going to rent a yacht and fuck off, or I'm going to buy a yacht and fuck off into the sea. <laughs> do you get to go on the yacht? or do you? Just... Oh, yeah. So you're on the yacht, too? Yeah, just sitting under... On the deck hanging out. <laughs> are you, I, took a are fucking, you... I took a jet ski out one time. I was blasting around. So, so you're having fun. You're not just sitting there like not. You're not having fun. Fun like everyone else is having fun. But you're yeah. you're definitely not like on point. Like oh, I got a fucking. Be... It's like okay, new scenario. Nothing's happening. Yeah. Okay, new, okay, new scenario. Drake uh, 
buys a dune buggy and goes in the desert. Are you in we got his... to do that too? We flipped ours. You flipped. <laughs> were you in yeah. his dune buggy or were you following? No, him? I wasn't. No, he was. Uh, he was doing his own thing. He was in like the the bigger ones. Yeah. Like we had the personal with two people. Yeah. And it was me and uh, it was me and um, actually hairdresser's name's J Mac. There's no way J Mac would ever watch this, but fucking shout out to J Mac. <laughs> J Mac was driving. He's a little like little Asian dude, and, and I'm smashed against him, so he can barely fit in the buggy. <laughs> and we we're like going, we literally like rolled onto our side, and then we watched the guys go over us, bounce, and then flip onto their top. <laughs> oh wow! We're fucking like they broke their buggy and all the shit. It was fun though. But, huh. So yeah, you're, body, fun. you're bodyguarding, but you're still like you get to hang out, kind of. Yeah, yeah just kind of act like you're kind of act like you're working, <laughs> make it look good. <laughs> keep, your, keep your scowl on you know yeah dude we went my wife wants to get a place there now i'm like fuck <laughs> it's fuck fucking hot there. man what's it's that here? fucking hot well this like, is a thing from october to like april it's absolutely yeah. beautiful it's like 80 yeah. degrees or whatever 20 degrees 25 mm. degrees celsius whatever the fuck um and then we just moved back to canada for like may through september yeah because yeah. i can't the What's that gym there? Is it? How do you say the name of that gym? I think it's Benus. Benus. Or Benus? Is it Benus? Benus? Or something like that. Yeah. Is that it was all right. I think you said Benus, don't you? But I don't know. Is that what a batter's gyms do? I don't know. That's not. I don't think that's Bader's gym. No, but that's the one where um I think isn't that where Andrew Jack or like Larry Wheels or something trains? Yeah. 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 So that's why I think it's been become popular. But I didn't get a chance to train out there at all because my wrist was fucked and I was yeah. too busy drinking and having fun. <laughs> did you see the gyms at all what's that did you see the gyms at all i didn't even go to the hotel gym no <laughs> what hotel did you stay at uh nikki beach oh okay. it's like a nice resort spot but they actually sell uh villas <laughs> so my wife's looking she's like we should get a villa i'm like are you fucking crazy they're like a condo <laughs> kind of on the beach they're, they're yeah they're 2.5 million dollars i'm like oh. I was just about to ask what the fuck are you talking about, man? Yeah. <laughs> like, maybe if Hostile like takes off fucking the next yeah. let's grab two of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Airbnb Only the 2. other 5? one. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. But uh the only thing that sucked was there's the, the Burj Khalifa is the tallest tower there, tallest building there. Mm-hmm. So the climax of the trip, I was like, I'm gonna take her there for dinner the day before we leave. That's going to kind of be our Valentine's dinner, dinner and all that. The worst fucking service in the world and the worst food in the fucking world. It was an really? absolute, it was the only part of my trip I was unhappy with. Is that that like, famous tower you always see pictures of? It's the really fucking, it's like the tallest building in, it's, I don't know, it's like the second or third tallest building in the world or something like that. Does it got like a tennis court, like an outdoor tennis court that kind of overlooks the ocean or something like that? No, I don't think that one does, no. Oh, okay. Anyway. But anyway, it was, uh, I couldn't believe they, you know, I don't like fine dining. I just don't. I went to a place tonight. You should have seen them look at me when I walked in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know Ontario. You know, yeah. all you guys is Oakville. Yeah, downtown oh, yeah. Oakville. Oh yeah, look uh, at, look that's at where like it shows up. <laughs> Did you wear a t-shirt too, or did you at least wear a oh, jacket? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I go everywhere. I go everywhere in a hoodie and fucking sweats, dude. It ain't fucking. Does my your... money's good. I'm sitting down <laughs> eating this motherfucker. I, I walked in. He's like. And my a client of mine, a friend of mine, knows the owner there. He got me the reservation because it was kind of last minute thing. So I come in and I'm like, "Yeah, it's rock reservation for Van Wick." And you can tell he's like, uh, uh. <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah," and I'm like, right there on the screen. And I'm like, the <laughs> <You're> like oh. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time we're we're sitting there. I'm just like, "Oh my god!" Totally okay. didn't want to let you in. He's this like, guy's oh. "Like, wrap it up, get his food out." Get his food out. <laughs> What kind of place was it? Was it like was it like fine dining, like super fine dining, or was it just casual fine dining? That's fine. It's like Oliver's Steakhouse. It's called. It's nice. Oh, okay, okay. I don't blame them for fucking looking at me sideways. So it's not like I'm like, <laughs> anyway, yeah. It's not you really their clientele. Does, does that kind of stuff bother you, Mike? I don't give a shit. Really? Because you know, I go anywhere. <laughs> I always try. You know, me and Ian have had this conversation before because yeah. I always try to hide. Like when I was bigger, I would always try and hide my size. Like mm, I didn't, I didn't want to be looked at like fucked up. There was no way to hide it. Like when you're 300 pounds, you you can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're tank tops. Just, 
What's that? But you weren't wearing tank tops to the mall and stuff. That's what I'm saying. So I would try, but I talked right. to Ian and Ian's like, yeah, I wear a tank top to the fucking grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> I would wear a tank top, period. But yes, I would. I don't care about hiding it ever, no. no you want to try and hide my size maybe is going through the airport. Really? Yeah. I try to be, to be 300, 300 pounds of the airport. Less I'd be 300 pounds on the full head of tattoos. It's even worse. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I hide those motherfuckers. <laughs> But that's, see, that's the thing. It's funny because I used to, um, when I, I used to talk to somebody about my anxiety and I would say, you know, I hate going to restaurants and shit because I get anxious and whatever. And the guy's like, you want to, you want to fit in, but you weigh 300 fucking pounds and you have a mohawk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you make Doesn't a good point. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Tactical option, man. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. But I could never understand that about myself. Like, why would you do that to yourself if you didn't want to be? Right. I mean, like, because most bodybuilders are introverts, but they stand out. Yeah. They, they yeah. made they did it to themselves. So I'm like, if you're an introvert, why would you get into something that's going to make you seen by everybody? But bodybuilders start out just you're hanging out with your guy, your your friends at the gym. You don't go anywhere except for the grocery store the odd time, and then like then all of a sudden you got to go to the wedding or something. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're gonna, you know, like a show. They like, should call it like bodybuilders in the wild. Just like show them out of their element. <laughs> <laughs> All the different events. Trying to sit in a fucking baseball game at a fucking. <laughs> <laughs> the best ever. Game. Yeah, game off. Of, stuck in the yeah, cramping up in the seat. What's yeah. that, Ian? You, you remember those Marcus Rule videos of him in the grocery store? Yeah, yeah, farting. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's like in the tank top, like fucking huge, and they smoking cigarettes in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they remember, he called his girlfriend over after he farted, and then she, yeah. she was like, "Oh." <laughs> I remember the when I was like around three twenty, I went to a fucking uh, a movie, and I had done legs. It was like a Sunday afternoon, and I had done legs, and like I didn't want to. I was being lazy, so the person tried to get in front of me, and I tried to like scoop in like this, so he get my hamstring fucking grabbed, oh, and no. I was like, I could, but I couldn't straighten my leg because it was too short. So I'm like. I'm rolling to the ceiling. Like, oh, oh. And, I'm like, and my girlfriend's like, "What's wrong?" At the time, like, "What's wrong with you?" I'm like, oh, oh. The whole theater's like staring at me. I'm like standing in the aisle, like trying to stretch my leg. Like, oh, that's, like I'm just gonna stand for the rest of the movie. I'm good. I'm not getting back in that seat. The fucking <laughs> hamstring against the wall. cramps after oh, legs. Buddy. Oh my god. Fuck. Remember, remember the restaurant we went to? Me, me, you, Paul, went with our wives. Yeah. To uh, Nico or whatever. Yeah. And we're sitting there and my fucking hamstring cramped up and I got up. I'm like, I go to the washroom. I stood up to kind of get it to release. And then my quad started to cramp. <laughs> yeah. So I fucking hobbled to the bathroom and I ended up, I think summer ended up getting me a salt water. Yep. She just poured a bunch of salt and some water and I fucking slugged it. And like two minutes later, I was fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I remember when I, when I first met my wife, uh, yeah, I don't think she ever been with a bodybuilder before. In the middle of the night, I got a cramp. And uh, she was like, wait, what's wait, wrong with you? And I, was, I was like, just get me some pickles. And so I pulled them my leg. Get some pickles. <laughs> get me, the get pickles. me some pickles. <laughs> that was my go-to whenever I had a cramp. <laughs> imagine that. Like, imagine what that sounds like to a normal chick. Exactly, yeah. You this guy for the first time. You just finish banging. You go to sleep. He wakes you up an hour later. Get me some pickles. Breathing, asking for pickles. <laughs> yeah, holding your, holding your hamstring in agony. <laughs> But the thing is, when your hamstring cramps when you're laying down, you end up like clutching here. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. so, like people think you're having a heart attack. Like, oh! Okay, so worst... like, push my toes back. Push my toes. What's the worst cramp you think you? Can... I, I have an answer for it, but I want to know what you guys think the worst cramp you could possibly get is. Oh, can I go first? Yeah, the inner thigh. The inner thigh. Yeah, that's bad. That's pretty. That bad. That one's brutal. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Anybody chode's else? pretty rough. Huh? You ever cramped your chode? No, thank oh my God. God, yeah. And taking a piss when you're on clen, and then you're oh, fucking. Like, <laughs> I sneeze sometimes, and I'll be like, oh, like fucking. I've never had that. It's like somebody's Brutal. sticking a spike. You can't. Fucking... There's no way you can relax it. You can't relax it. You just have to breathe. No, you, know, you can massage it. If you massage it, it'll go away, Mike. You just because <laughs> your fingers. <laughs> While you're eating pickles. Yeah. <laughs> Your, your wife comes in, pants down. Or something. <laughs> your finger in your mouth. Where, where do I put this? Where do I put this? <laughs> Ian, you got one or no? Yeah, those ones are pretty bad. I've, I've had some pretty nasty ab cramps before. Okay, I'm thinking uh, that's that's I'm thinking time wise. My worst, and it's happened on more than 
four or five occasions. Ab cramp just as you're blowing your load. Worst, <laughs> worst, worst fucking pain ever. Because you're like, you're trying to, you're just finishing. And you're like, oh, oh. And you're like, oh. oh. It ruins it for I've you. Had the, and I've been ruined that exact moment, but during sex for sure, yeah. I've had the exact moment on more than like two or three occasions. And it's oh, that's the, unfortunate. It's the worst. It ruins the whole fucking thing. Yeah, like, just, yeah. Fucking now, I'm, now I'm in pain and I didn't get to feel my fucking yeah. my shit. Right. <laughs> no. Never know. Some people are into that stuff. It might be good. <laughs> that happened in a car once. That was that was brutal. I'm like cramping in my stomach. Oh yeah. I'm cramping in the car. I'm trying to recline. I'm trying to recline this <laughs> pull over at the same time. <laughs> I, I've had that a few times, yeah. Anyways, Ian, what's going on with you, man? Ah, fuck all man. Same old shit. You seem quiet today. What's going on? No, it's just we're just, just chilling. Listening? Huh? All right, we got to. Um, I I want to pull something up before we go on with this because, uh, Mike said he wanted to make a change. So let's see if he's serious. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna... here. Is Mike. I just want to? I just want to switch. Uh, Clarita and Samson. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make a switch two foot. Samson looks awesome. Samson is gonna fucking win. Yeah, he looks fucking great, man. Like his conditioning at four weeks out was better than it was on stage. Yeah. Okay, Paul, what's up? Uh, I want to switch Rami and Clarita. Oh man, you guys are just shitting on Sean today. Come on. Uh, I did, Rami is that though that updated him. I was pretty impressed. Rami yeah. does look his back looks better. I do. Yeah. His triceps still looks a little bit wow. flat. But it seemed like his back was his biggest uh, problem. He's I don't still, think if his, sure. if his peak is good and his posing is better than at the Olympia, yeah, I think he could win if he's in the proper condition. I don't think his triceps will be enough to hold him back. Yeah, I agree. But he's got to be in a proper shape. He's got to change his posing too. His posing at yeah. the Olympia looked so unsure. Yeah, yeah. Because he would hit a shot. I think he thought he was. I think he thought he was doing a good thing because he would hit a shot and then a second shot. Yeah, he'd change it. You know, like the like the like the front double front double elongated, then blow out. Yeah, he would do the front double elongated. His arms look great, and then he would crunch his, the abs, but then his arms would come down. Yeah, right. and like, that it all just, funky looking. Yeah, it just and he did that on more than one shot, and I'm like, why are you doing two or three shots? Just do the good one. Oh, he did it on his um, front lat spread as well. Oh yeah, he pulled way up. Yeah. And then he pulled down, and then he did finished with like a middle of the road one. And I'm like, you guys think that's you guys think that's because of like there's different voices in his ear? Or is that a personal thing? You think or like someone's telling him like, oh, and you know, I mean, he's battling in his brain with like some, this one guy told me this, this guy told me this. So I'm gonna be yeah. No, I him. think it was planned with one guy. Yeah, it looked to me, it looked to me routine. it looked to me like they were saying show everything. Yeah, but I'm like, some of those everything shots didn't really look right. Like you should have just get your best shot and then work on your transitions. Don't like Nick, like Nick the front that. double and crunches down and stands like a fucking yeah. like, like stand the way there all day. Yeah, traditionally, what you're supposed to do is find the best shot for you, mm-hmm. and then if you're gonna oh. hit, if you're gonna try and hit more than one shot, you do it as you transition. Yeah, not yeah. not the one shot. Like you're not supposed to hit three different front front double biceps. Mm-hmm. You hit one front double bicep, but maybe you hit a pose while you're getting into it or getting out of it, right? Yeah. So I think they're trying to hit too many poses like in the mandatory and it would just What's look- your most fa- what's your guys most hated pose or transition shot? As you can tell I have one in my head already. Transition. <laughs> I, I don't I, my most the hated thing is like side chest and then this like slam down. Oh, oh, you mean when, pe- yeah, you mean when people do it? I thought you meant. I hate yeah. that shit. Yeah. Stop fucking doing that, man. Like, I hate. I hate it. We get it. People. <laughs> people do it. People do it because it's an easy transition. Yeah. And because they got it from Phil Heath, but Phil could do it because his arms were this big yeah. around. I, right. I tried doing. I tried doing it once or twice in the show once, and it, I like looked at it after. I'm like, I look silly. I don't like it. Yeah. You got to have. Like, it's almost. It's almost become a mandatory shot for people. It's like everyone's doing this fucking. Slam down and then turn. Or I think, the I think someone like Nick yeah. Walker, when you have like thirty inch arms, you can get away doing it. But yeah. I think everybody else, it's like it's not necessarily the best. Your arms got to be the right size for it. And also, honestly, Mike, I, I don't think most of the open guys take a lot of time posing. 
Mm-hmm. And that's just a very easy transition. You know, you're going, yeah. from, you're going from here to here. So it's like, it's a simple transition for them to hit rather than something a little bit more complicated. I just don't see the point in it though. Cause what are you trying to show there? I think they're trying, a lot of guys are trying to show their, like when Phil used to do it, he would have like knockout fucking obliques. Yeah. Right? Phil has and, a crazy and his arms, huge arms. Yeah. Yeah. And his arm looked super thick and his leg from the side was nuts. So he was kind of like exposing that whole, like, yeah, I could understand. Yeah, it's like it's almost like if the arm is like obviously back behind you and you're slamming like this, but it's almost like this like torque down. It's like yeah. I'm mm-hmm. turning my you guys are like showing like look at my and it's nothing to do with like this. Here, like, yeah. Look at my tricep, right? Like yeah, because your arm looks bigger. It, yeah, there's guys doing it that like that's your that's probably a horrible shot for you, but you're like oh so and so did it, so I'm gonna fucking do look, it. It's like, yeah. I mean, didn't Roly do it like that for years because he didn't couldn't reach behind or like some shit? <laughs> uh, his, tri- I think his tricep. See, Paul, I think this is what he's trying to show, right? Like when you yeah. open up, you show the tricep flex, you show all this gnarliness in here. Yeah. But like as awesome as that well, picture looks for Phil, do you th- I still don't like how it like makes your midsection look, you know? Well, I don't think this was his best. Oh, this is yeah. Yeah, that's 2012, really. I, yeah, I, I, I can see how he shows more detail there by opening up and, and you know his, his you know the, the taper to the waist. But I, I like it the traditional way. I, I think it looks better just stayed that way. Just like this, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, you're still showing your obliques. No, no, but this is how he does it. He's just when Phil would do it, it would be like when the pose was done, he would give them this on the way out. Yeah, it was almost like for him like an exclamation point at the end of the pose. I. Eh? For him, it was like, I'm going to hit this on the way to my back shots. Yeah, he does look great in that pose, too, though. I mean, like, for him, it works. Yeah, he's yeah. fucking crazy good. I yeah. But that's yeah. another thing That's another thing people have to do. Like, I, I knew early on in my career that you can't just hit the shots that you like. You have to hit right. the shots that work for your body. Right. Like, I never had massive arms, so there's a lot of, like, like wide open shots that I couldn't hit because it was just going to make you look worse. Yeah. So that's why probably mike seeing all these guys doing phil's side chest yeah like yeah. like i said i think guys like nick and phil can get away with that when you have fucking cannons you know like right right yeah, yeah. i always i always love the you know the kevin lavrone uh most muscular the side, the side most muscular I, yeah. I love that pose and i always wish i could do it so i when i competed i would do it anyway but i look like shit in it because i had no arms you mean like the is it like the split like coming the side one, like yeah. no I, yeah, for yeah. me i like it better with just his hands clasped together in the front oh his oh, monster oh, belts and that. triceps i yeah. thought you meant that like angled like, yeah angled, I, was, like, I do like that one too that one the crabby does but i like yeah. his just his hands clasped together in the front his yeah, belts and his triceps yeah I, whenever i, like I hit that one, pose, um, I picture that but i don't even feel have like some of the best hand clasps ever yeah i like the one that uh that um that one right there. I love that pose. Look at those triceps. Man. I like yeah. and delts. <laughs> so you would always do this? That yeah. One. yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's a great one too. You know, it's, like a, it's, like a, it's almost like a squeeze out and like rock up type thing. Yeah. He, um, I've never ever seen anybody be able to hit this shot properly since him. Yeah. I've seen a bunch of guys try, but nobody can yeah. pull off. I think Evan hit it pretty nice one time. I remember seeing Evan hit it. Evan gets pretty close. Juan Morel gets pretty close, but I don't think anybody's ever nailed it like, no, perfectly. Somehow he he has the uh, he's the only one to really get it get it done right. It's his signature pose. Eh? So I was having a conversation with someone today. And we we're talking about Nick and Samson. We're gonna have this debate. I think if we're talking eight mandatory poses, I can make an argument for four for Samson. Okay. Which four? Front lat. Front lat, front double, ab and thigh, most muscular. I don't think I agree with the most muscular. Nick's got a really good most muscular, but abs and thighs, sure, okay. Obviously, that's going to be an excellent pose for Samson. Front lat is Nick's like weakest pose if he if you were you have to pick one, I guess. So sure. They both have pretty good front doubles, but obviously Samson's is like they're two very different styles of physique, right? Like yeah. it pinches that down, crazy thick block yabs, humongous arms, like you know. Your Samson is more like a silhouette, you know. Yeah, so you like all Samson's front poses, eh, Fuad, and then the yeah. side and back yeah. neck. So I think, like I said, I I think um, because of Samson's stature, I think he holds his own um, with the most muscular. I don't. I do think. Like Nick has more muscle, but because Samson is stature is so big, oh, wide. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think his most muscular will win. So I think if you take most muscular and the three front shots, that's four. 
I would give the side shots to Nick because obviously he's thick as fuck. His hamstring drop. And, and then I would give the back shots to Nick. So I would say 4-4. Four, four. Now, then you go, okay, Nick's going to be probably in better condition. But is it going to be is it going to be enough condition that it will outshine Samson's shape? Yep. Right? Because that's going to be where they're where they're differing is Samson's going to win the shape battle. Nick is going to win the conditioning battle. And it's going to be I, I know you guys don't judge exactly like this, Paul, but in your head, do you weigh some poses heavier than others? No, the way I think of it, I think of it in my head like a point system kind of without so like for example, if you put like a point of like 10 points on each pose and you're given uh Samson a 10 on the front double bicep, Nick, let's just hypothetically hypothetically say like a seven. Okay. And then so and then on reverse poses, like if if you're giving Nick a 10 on the back double by and Samson a nine, that that's you know, does that make sense? Like so it's yeah, like the no, total no. score is yeah. what I, is what I see is what I mean. So it's 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 how it's how much his strengths outweigh the other person's strengths, like how much of a you know, in your head, where do you, what do you think? Like, are his strengths enough to overcome his weaknesses against the other guy's strengths and weaknesses? Yeah, and those and numbers, it's hard to... those two numbers you're doing is like a comparative to each other, not an individual score. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. Just so I'm not copywriting anybody, anybody who wants who wants to watch this comparison, it's on uh, Mark's Max Muscle YouTube page. He's done a comparison with Nick and Samson at the 22 Mister Olympia. So we'll just we'll use this as our um kind of our idea of what we're talking about reference point so reference point yeah so off the bat silhouette wise i think samson has that right yeah yeah i mean samson's pretty undeniable as a silhouette yeah we go to- i love nick's front double man i don't know why well i feel like nick's double was better last year i feel like he's crunching down too much this year i don't know i like it and his arms just look fucking nuts and like it's just a very such a muscular pose you know i think you see him Kind of bringing the elbows in a little bit on that pose with you like that's why like look last year i remember me and nick used to talk about this and he said he worked on it with matt because he used to elongate his waist then he crunched it down crunch is way better yeah the crunch is better but he's crunching it down more this year and i think it's bringing his arms in yeah it it gives him a good pop to his chest though like if he was back maybe he'd lose that pop to the chest a bit we might get a little more lag you know i want to see if i can find nick walker Front double bicep, twenty twenty one Arnold. Just so I can kind of show what I'm talking about. Okay, so here, can you see that? Is that too yeah. small? See how he's crunching down in both of these, but his arms, but his arms are still open. Yeah, his elbows like are wider. Like I like better. that better too. So, like, if you look at this one, see how his arms come more forward. It looks like he's trying to pull lat, pull lat around more. Some yeah, way. yeah. I don't know. I I like them both. I, I actually kind of like. See even here, look even, even even here. This is six weeks from the Olympia. See, he's like crunched down, but see how like his arms are parallel, like they're flat with his body. Yeah, yeah like his elbows. Like, I, I, I agree with that, but I also think he's getting a little less chest pop in there. Like it, it looks a little better. And go back to the other one. Okay, one second. So you're saying compare? You think his chest looks better here? Or you think it looks better here? Here, he's got a little more thickness because he's a little more in, you know. I wouldn't say so. I would just well, say okay, that, no, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. yeah. I think I think he's doing himself a disservice. Like he can get away with it because his arms are so big that doesn't matter. His arms are fucking insane. Right? Yeah, I know. Oh but, yeah, jeez. But when they were flat like this, I thought they were. It's like a better look for him. Yeah. yeah. I I always thought you should pose big, you know. Like that. Like look like at that. that. Like look that. that. See, I don't, I don't like that nearly as much as this year's. Why? Just doesn't it doesn't look as nearly as muscular to me. He's almost too spread out. Yeah, he looks like he's spreading himself out. Really? That's like when you show that comparison to see that to me, like right stage. there. That's perfect. That last one. This that one. is like I like that. Yeah, I would take this. I would take this. This looks great. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, this is this one. I think is perfect. Yeah, I agree. That's my favorite one. Yeah. This, this, I like. I always like when I see a front double and the arms are straight across. And an X, and an X frame. Yeah, that's what I like to see on that pose. So, so in this shot, I mean, it's not necessarily a takeaway for Samson. If Samson's, like, I mean, like, because look at the arms, man. Look at the difference in arms there. It's also, that, it's like the, it's like Samson's so spread out. Do you know what I mean? Like everything's yeah. spread out over a wider surface. Yeah, he's even takes taking up more. Up more- He's taking up more of the frame of even Nick's doing, right? But Nick's right. popping the frame forward this, more. 
Okay, in this shot, Nick's arms are better. What else? That's how how Mike just described it is actually exactly how I see it. Like Nick is popping towards you more, where Samson's more like spread out, you know? Open, open. So you almost have to be careful when you're like when you have when you're like this long limbed person. Like yeah. you have longer limbs and like, mm -hmm. yeah, your arm, his arms are, I'm sure, huge steps, right? But like, mm -hmm. once that gets off the body, we start to see dimensions change, right? So it's like Nick's trying to keep like the focal point of like these huge fucking arms and like yeah. stacking, stacking on chest. So it's like, I'm tight in my shot, whereas Samson's muscle, like, now muscle, I'm, muscle. I'm everywhere. <laughs> but Samson's everywhere now. So we yeah. see the, you see the holes in More terms caps. of like where... Where yeah. density density is missing because you see the spread out. Now. Like like Nick is very muscular, but he's really accentuated. I, I disagree with you guys. Really? I, I, so listen, I, I'll agree with you on this. I think when I see this, and I know people are gonna be like, "Oh, you're biased because it's Samson." I already think I already think Nick is the favorite. So let's just get that out of the way. Mm -hmm. So I, I disagree with you guys in one in one regard in in what looks better. So Mike, you're 100 right. When it's stacked up, you're like fuck, muscle on muscle on muscle, and it's 3D, right? Mm -hmm. It's because you like said he has to, he's posing to what his strengths are. Like yeah, said. right. right. So I agree. He know he knows that if he sits there packed, no one can touch him. But if yeah. he spreads out, then it's like okay, well now I'm showing that I'm there's issues, right? Like his chest isn't strong. Yeah, yeah, no, I I agree with yeah. everything you're saying about stacking it up, right? Yeah. But if I'm picking what shot I think looks better, I'm going to go with Samson because it's more statuesque and it more it flows better. I agree. Yeah, like looking at that picture of him now, and then the video that I saw that made me want to change my mind. It's like two different guys. Well, the, partially the reason why this this video is not like this picture is not indicative of what we think we're seeing now is Samson's already in better condition than this now. Mm. Yeah, but that's I mean it's like that's going to be a major determining thing, right? Yeah, of course. He looks he looks fucking standing in that video where he's just like looking at the camera trying to fucking focus. It's pretty stupid to look at. Like it's like, what the fuck is that? Whereas this guy looks like he's still training to get where that guy is in that video. You know what I mean? This like is, he looks soft. This is this is Nick with his stomach a little stretched out. It's just I think it's just not quite in the pose yet. No, because I think yeah. I remember Nick doing both versions during the he did do both. Yeah, he did like the long one and then yeah, see, was... I don't like that nearly as much. No. This is in between. This isn't the full length one, though. It's kind of like in between poses. See, because even there, like right away, like the loss of look of denseness and muscularity is significantly less to me. No, no, yeah. but we're talking. But we're talking about two different things, Ian. I like the crunch down look. No, I'm just saying this. This pose, this version of the front doubles uh, compared to the other, I don't like nearly as much. Yeah, this it's is way better. way better. I just, I just like when the arms are opened up a bit. That's all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Paul, what do you think? You're the judge. I, um, yeah, I agree. You know, I think he, uh, like, like, uh, like Mike said, like, you know, each guy's going to pose with their strengths. Um, in that pose, I agree with you, Fuad. I, I, I prefer to go with a more statuesque look. I know like in the, in that pose, Nick is going to look more muscular because of the way he hits the pose a little bit too. Um, but I know like I'll see Sam's muscularity in other poses. I'll see how I'll see his conditioning and his muscularity in other poses in that yeah. particular pose out for me. I want to see that X frame that statuesque look that you know the silhouette and you know i don't want to see any gaps either um but you know that that's what i'm looking for in that pose so i'm going to lean towards the there, look. That's when, we're, when we're looking at this that's just me though yeah, no, yeah. That's fair, fair. Yeah. when you're when you're looking at this what gaps do you see because my in my mind the first thing is drawn to my eye is the arm <laughs> could have a little more sweep to the bottom of them a little more yeah, tricep just, that's yeah. where i see a little gap there um you know i, I think the way he's uh elongated there you're not going to see as much muscularity in the abdominals as where the way nick hits that pose um but to be honest like i see just as much detail to samson's quads as, as i do nick's yeah and, yeah and uh and i and i like the shape of samson's sweep better the overall shape of his legs better no but when i say when i say holes in samson's physique i'm talking about if we were going to look at him and say his physique is perfect in my opinion the tricep sweep and, arm. Yeah. and the lats yeah. the lats could come down a little lower yeah is that yeah? Yeah. That's why I was like, I wonder what his, I wonder what that pose would look like that Samson's doing if he hit it the way Nick did, and like, a little bit yeah, crunched because he's, he's because he's got this like tiny waist, so when he stretches it, it looks even more elongated. Do you know what I mean? No, dude. But so if he like sat it down and he was just like over the shot more, like his yeah, like Sean Roden. Like think of how like Sean his hip, like if he kept his hip behind his sternum and just rolled up forward through the shot instead uh, of like, like laid Google, back. Google a Sean Roden front double. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. I think that's two different looks, though, man. Sean had a shorter waist. 
I just uh, need to see it. Uh, Scamps has got longer abdominals. Yeah, they're different structurally. Like I know they both have beautiful physiques, but like this is a very small. <laughs> it's a small paint. Yeah, like, it's, it's very. Small, yeah. but it's hard to say if you pulled that up, it might look very similar to Samson's. You know. Yeah. Sean does that little twist on his two-way. Sean has a, you know, he's got a little bit more lat here. His arms are a little bit thicker. Man, Sean had a beautiful physique. Fuck, Fuck yeah, jeez. Yeah. For me, Samson, just a little bit more tricep hang on that pose. I, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, I mean, I I'd like to, I'd like to see it crunch down just a tad. You know, just like a little bit. Use, I feel like he'd use a little bit more lat thickness in here. Yeah. It, it would really finish it off. Yeah. I feel like there's this space here from here to here. Is just a little bit too empty. You know what's pretty cool about it? Look at his latch are as wide as his quad sweep. <laughs> yeah, the, that that part's good, like his Terry's, but he needs to build the lat down here. And yeah, it's lower evident, lat. It's evident from his back shots, right? Like he needs to build this frame under here. But let's go to the next uh, front That's latch. An... It's not really an awesome shot for either one of them, but I think I think I have Samson doing this one. Only because Nick's, unless Nick has corrected it between now and Arnold, between this and the Arnold. Mm -hmm. Side shots, hard not to give them to Nick. Anybody? He's not giving up much, though, Samson. No. You know, Nick is more a little bit more muscular in that shot, at least in that those those particular shots, but he's not giving up much. Well, it would be crazy to see, like, the level, if, we, if Samson can get to that level of conditioning where like yeah. everything pops because it's like you can tell you can tell the degrees of conditioning that if they got degrees better how much crazier every mm -hmm. shot would look yeah so it's like yeah he's maybe giving up a little bit of density in that shot but like the the leg is still pretty it doesn't sit like yeah. nicks but it's still fucking pretty to look at man it's not yeah if it's stood yeah. beside anybody else you'd be like he kills that guy yeah and that chest height is fucking that's straight across the top line of peck. Do you know what yeah. I mean? How the how the clavicle goes straight across. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have those delts popping on both sides is fucking crazy. Most guys don't have that. Yeah. It's Nick's arm and side delt and side leg are just so fucking. Nuts. Yeah, this is this yeah. is nuts. And hamstrings. Look at that front delt, man. It's like, this is the other thing too, man. This connection here, where his yeah. hamstring just connects to his fucking glute, and there's no space. This well, is this whole thing is crazy to look at. Yeah, crazy detail. Like that's the density. And then as you go up, you get to this massive fucking arm and shoulder. It's it's a tough one not to give Nick the side shots. Honestly, for sure, I, I would give it to him. I'm, I'm just saying, like I don't think he's killing him though. It's almost like he makes up for his lack of density in his chest by both arms being so fucking huge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like look how look how much that off arm fills up the frame. Right. It's not the opposite pec. It's the yeah. opposite arm. Yeah, building out that frame, right? yeah, his front delt, Jesus. Front delt is just fucking consuming his chest, you know? <laughs> yeah, Nick's arms are just a little too crazy there. I think, yeah, everything. You see the, sh the completeness of the shoulder? See the difference there? Like, yeah, yeah. Nick's, like, Nick's yeah. abs are well-defined and well-developed, so they look good. This, this sticks out like crazy, and it could be partially the way Samson's posing because he's leaning back instead of right. forward. But, yeah, it's, it's always hard sometimes with pictures too when you're showing yeah. like objects in a still. You need to see how they move in like real time. Yeah. Definitely. But I know this shot. I know when Samson does this shot, he actually does lean back like this. Yeah. Whereas you can see Nick is leaning toward the camera more, so you get this split. Yeah, Nick. Nick also is not. He's just letting his chest rest here, where Samson is pushing against that backpack a little bit, flexing that yeah. backpack. Yeah, he's twisting. Yeah, it. yeah Nick is yeah. just letting it hang. I actually think this is the best way to hit the shot. I just think the shoulder should be more square, and then you would yeah. show more detail. Yeah, drop drop that right front yeah. shoulder. Yeah, that's a, but such a but must be such a difficult pose for some you know for some of the bigger guys, three hundred pound fucking dudes. Uh Sanson's only getting yeah. in condition here. He's not getting crushed. Yeah, I know. No, his his back is a little better in this shot, like in terms of width and shape. Um, and and th overall thickness, but Nick's conditioning his glutes and hands. Ian, let me ask you this: if if these glutes were on this physique, would he be winning? Nick's hamstrings are still a little better too, but yeah, oh. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you <clears throat> swap the lower bodies, then for sure, yeah. Not the whole yeah. lower body, <clears throat> not even the, the glutes. I just mean if if Samson's glutes were in this condition, 
would this with that post would this whole conversation be different? Yeah, because look at his hamstring. Look at Samson's hamstrings. The detail in the inner hamstrings are that's crazy. Yeah, they're, they're really. You can see, you can obviously see the difference in, in conditioning throughout the back too, and the hamstrings and the glutes. But yeah, I think it's just the biggest difference is obviously that his glutes look less hard than the rest of them. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that might be a different story though. But it's, I mean, it's still that's sure. still a, that's still a very close shot. Like that mm -hmm. one's less close, but um, Nick looks better in that one to me. Yeah, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was very closer with Nick Bear's sl slight edge. It's you know what it is. One second, I think I figured. Like that's a toss up, to be honest. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I just figured it out. This isn't Nick's full pose. Yeah, um, he's not opened up there. You can see. As it. You can see here. Here he's fully open. Oh yeah, he's set. Yeah, he's set. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But now Samson's not in in, in that picture, particular shot. Yeah, yeah. Samson's not flexing this one, so it's yeah. not really accurate either way. Yeah. But I, I I'm pretty confident saying that the back shots are Nick's. Yeah. Like I don't. It's Nick's hardness you can just see in the skin, you know. Like especially like, yeah. the back, the back double is the biggest one. Like this yeah. is really hard. Lower shot. back. Look at this. Look at how complete this entire fucking thing is. Yeah, I mean, because Nick's lat width is is quite superior, his shape doesn't even like his X frame on that is very good. Like it's not any worse because Samson's lats are a little narrow, you know. Yeah, yeah, that that's probably Samson's weakest pose right now. I'd say with yeah. uh, from the from the waist up at least. When I look at this pose, I don't know if Samson's pulling his rhomboids together. It doesn't. Is that what it is? Yeah. Go, yeah, go you can see it. Eh? Go go from the video. Maybe he does it differently. Not in this. Uh... No. Okay. I haven't thought I'm going to give to Samson. <sighs> Come on, man. Yeah. Tiny, tiny waist, great abs, and his legs are better. Yeah, I mean, yes. In that exact shot, I don't necessarily agree, but if I remember from the show, I do agree he may be better in that, that pose. But Nick's conditioning difference is pretty big here. Like, Samson looks like he's not quite come down and you know, pushing against that pec, flexing his chest yet. Um, and his legs in that angle don't look like they have a crazy amount of detail, Like, but they still look good. Nick's, Nick's legs look better in that pose to me. But Samson's if we're looking, If we're looking, you're right. If we're looking at just these photos, you make a good point. But I'm thinking, like, of what I know I saw. Yeah, no, and that's yeah, why I said right, I, I yeah. do remember. I was on the stage with them, so I did yeah, do yeah, remember. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, in that specific photo, I have Nick with that. It's almost like if Samson had a little bit bigger shoulders, because when I look at this, Samson's got yeah. superior quads, good midsection, better chest, but Nick's got better arms. And and is there is there a picture of Nick doing a hand clasp as well? There must be one. No, it's just that one. No? Just that one. We can go. Weird. I thought he usually does a hand clasp, no? I think so, yeah. What about Andrew Jacked? He's getting fucking coached by Chris Aceto now, man. Yeah, yeah. It's Psycho Lewis. They got him. They're putting him through hell. Psycho guarantees me he's going to be a, a good chunk better. I believe it from what I've been watching him do to him. Yeah. Now, he, he thinks that a lot of, you know, things that were issues with his training that can be significantly improved have been improved, you know? Nick should do this most muscular all. Yeah, see, like, look at that. That's fucking. Yeah, that's, that's a nice shot. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's from this year. That's last year's Arnold. Okay. This is six weeks out from the Olympia. Look at the second photo in second photo. That's from the Arnold. The tongue out. Yeah, no, it's still a good one. No, no, I know. I'm trying to find something from this year. This year he just pulled this one out. Hmm. I wonder why. It looks good, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't think it looked like this. The this is way more superior. That's bad. I do like that better. Look how good his fucking shoulders look there. Yeah, yeah, and and the the nice thing about this too is see one thing I think Samson was getting a little advantage on there is because you could see Samson's waist, like you couldn't see his yeah, waist, yeah, yeah, and you could see Nick's. 100%. And like Nick was working slightly against him only because you couldn't see Samson's. And when he covers it up there, you're just yeah. seeing the nice blocky abs, but not the shape, you know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so right. that's that's really better. His delts look nuts. His abs look crazy. Like, that's... That front double's better, you and I win. <laughs> <laughs> He's gained a lot of goddamn muscle then from that show. Like, fucking hell. He I thought so much more muscular this year. You know, it's funny. I thought that when I th when I saw his arms come down, I'm like, I wonder if he's just gotten so much bigger that he can't. Yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, that looks those two photos look 20 pounds, 15 pounds different to me. Yeah. yeah. What was his weight from last year compared to this? I think he was about eight to ten pounds up from last year's Olympia. He was a eh? wow. That's a lot of tissue, especially when you're a fucking freak already. Yeah, what is he on stage at? Like two sixty? I think he was around two high two fifties or two fifty five or something. He was like two forty five last year. Wow. Two forty eight last year, maybe two fifty eight this year or something, you know? Yeah. Does Andrew Jack have any uh, photos released lately? Do you guys know? No. I haven't seen anything. Nothing, eh? Just training no. stuff. I haven't seen Rami's update recently. I haven't seen anybody else's. Um, You know what? Uh, Mike, mm. I didn't ask you this question. Or I don't think. Do you think if Andrew Jack is in shape, he can win? Like if he's in like real, real shredded shape the way people want to see. No. What about Rami? If, if Rami's in 21 condition, but with you know a little less tricep, can he win? I'm happy with my order. <laughs> <laughs> Not to like talk like people like always talk shit about those guys. It's like, no, I don't they're all fucking amazing, but yeah. It's so hard to pick this lineup. What do I have? Samson, Rami, Nick. Bonac, I got to change that. Oh, you got Justin. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I saw something that might be really interesting. You, you know, Akeem? Akeem? Really? I saw Akeem post a fucking back shot the other day. That changed that changed your opinion of that, yeah. I got I got to bring it up just to show you guys. Yeah. Uh, where did uh, I? You're putting yeah. ball real goddamn low here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think Justin. I mean, he did place. He just placed eighth at ninth at the Olympia, and he beat almost all those guys you put ahead of him there. Three or four of those guys. No, I didn't. No, he didn't. He only beat Justin. He didn't beat. Well, he beat Akeem too. Who Bonac? Yeah, but I think I don't think Justin was at his best. I don't definitely don't think Akeem was at his best. Let me bring this up real quick. Uh, Instagram. We'll go to Akeem. Akeem. Maybe I am reaching in hopes of Akeem being awesome, but fuck, this looked good to me. I don't remember his back looking this dry this far out his lower back that's what i'm saying when you see striations in his lower back like that i've never seen yeah. that on him yeah so it's then it's nice to see guys who don't who don't pull lat spread so hard you know what i mean all the way like around he's just, he, he's just sitting on that yeah like he found it he found it and then he rocks back he doesn't like yeah yeah, yeah. he's not forward you know what i mean yeah, yeah. When you got lats, like he's like hyper aware of where his lats like able to set and rest and then he rocks open back yeah back. And then the uh, other thing I noticed is, you, right. so you see all this, right? You're like, okay, his back looks dry. I've never seen that. And then I go down, and his legs are dry as fuck. Mm -hmm. And his glutes aren't flexed here, so I don't know what his glutes look like. But his yeah, legs... I see Olympia, though, man. I remember seeing him backstage in that light, and like his back and glutes and hands look really dry to me backstage. And yeah. he's still up in that top group, you know. Have you seen his back look like this on stage, Ian? I saw him look like this standing backstage at the Olympia. Yeah, with this dryness in his back. Drier than this, but he was still obviously four weeks out in this photo. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just he was drier than this at the Olympia for sure. Yeah, I just don't remember ever seeing him. He could be on pace to be better though. I'm not disputing that. Yeah, I don't know. He kind of shocked me when I saw this because you know Akeem's not Akeem's a dark horse because he's not fucking yeah. small, man. He can he can come in any show and be top three. Yeah, he I can. Mean, he has been sick at the Olympia, right? Yeah. I don't think he should be counted out yet, man. Because if he brings that conditioning, like that, if that's still four weeks out and he keeps going from there, I don't know. He could fucking be in the top four, five, three. Yeah, no, no one out muscles him. That's for sure. In any show, <laughs> is this going to be a better show than the Olympia? I would assume for him because of the pretty close proximity, it'll be a better showing for him. But this is going to be my racist comment of the day. I think for any of these black guys. <laughs> The black guys with a bit thicker skin like that, like, you know, like a uh, Samson or Andrew or or um, Akeem, I think longer time dieting 
and, and like that and keeping those body fat levels, the skin thinner longer is going to be more of a benefit to, the, to them than anybody. I, I don't think these guys have any trouble holding on to muscle. So I don't think it's like the longer dieting, they're going to fade. Um, and I think that them staying lean like that for a long time is going to pay big impact. And you're already seeing it in Samson. Chris tells me absolutely he's seeing it in Andrew. You could be seeing it there in, in Akeem. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's definitely a thing for sure. What I'm asking mm -hmm. though is do you think not – I guess not fully, but is it is this show going to be more exciting because the guys have seen like they're all going to be in better shape? And we're going to get we're going to get a hundred percent Rami. We're going to get a hundred percent Nick. We're going to get better Samson. We're going to get better fucking Justin. Better fucking Andrew. There's a, there's a lot of good stories to it too. Like Samson's shape versus Nick's muscularity. Big Rami is he going to be coming back after the Olympia? You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Clarita in this lineup. You know, there's a lot of good stories. There's in also, show. there's also Andrew and Andrew showing up. To see to show everybody who he really is with a new coach too, yeah. So there's so many like like you know cool things about this show. Yeah, a new coach, and he's living with his trainer. Like he's living there with Chris Lewis and getting his ass what, whooped every day. What was really? the, what was the knock on Andrew in the sense that like what are, what are these psycho and whoever trying to what are they trying to fix or what are they saying was wrong? Conditioning, Conditioning. is but in terms of like his in terms of like specifically his lifting style or his training style, what was the problem? Oh, I, I didn't ask questions specifically, but they just said there was a lot of issues with the training that he was saying, a lot of stuff he was doing that was like, you know, because he's really learned to lift with like Larry Wheels. He was trained kind of like power mm. lifter -y, you know, like mm. not really a, a really hypertrophy based training style. And there was a lot of issues with the exercise selection stuff. So um, mm. I think just correcting that and then obviously having intensity pushed by a trainer daily. Um, mm. And then, you know, it's hard to say with a new coach what difference that can make because – that's, you know, that's not a tangible that you can really gauge till show day in terms of conditioning and stuff. But a trainer is obviously yeah. going to make a difference the whole, every yeah. day. You know? yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think diet's going to have more impact than the training. No, no, I, I absolutely agree it can, yeah. but we won't know the difference. Like, that's not as much of a, I think it's like, because coaches, two different coaches might not peak a guy well or both Same coach him well, or, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, we don't know that yet. You know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we do know he's training with this guy every day. Like, for all we know, Aceto could peak him worse than Farah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, we can't say that's a definite. Where improving your training is a guaranteed benefit, you know? Right, yeah. We don't well, know yet if Aceto is a benefit, you know? That'll be determined at the arm. <laughs> I want to see if they tweak his posing at all on a few of his, on a few of his poses. Yeah. I never, I, his side chest could use a little work. I didn't think the rest mm. of his poses were bad. I thought his two side, side shots mainly. Um, Maybe it was his, uh, Nick front that was, uh, his front lad. I, I don't love how he hits, but his, oh, the his front lad is killer. What are you guys talking about? Front double is like the best in the world. No, front his, lat, I don't love his front lat spread is absolutely his best pose. You think so? I think it's just how he locks, he like locks his legs or like stands on his legs a little funny. It looks he does stand very straight. Yeah. yeah, but when you have quads that big, yeah, yeah. yeah well, look, it's not a bad <laughs> pose, but I don't think it's his, it's better than his front double. All right. Uh, where the fuck is it? Here, I'll share my screen so you guys can look with me. Right here. You don't like that? Okay, that one looks good, but it, it's not his best for sure. Look at his front double up there, so up above it. This? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's he's got, got a very unique. Shot. He's got a very unique front double. This, front double. This that is front double is nuts, man. Like, yeah. This is a great shot for him too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so people far. draw people draw comparisons between Samson and Sean Roden, and I almost see it more with Andrew, except he's I bigger. See it way more, especially in that front double. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's a different look. Eh? He's yeah. got better better biceps than Sean, but it it's Sean's legs are really good too. I mean, that's a that's a comparable, and myth not even better than a Sean Roden front double. Yeah, and he hits it very similar. Yeah. Yeah, he's a very impressive man. It's very impressive. I, it'd be cool to see him um, live up to the hype from last year because I think his hype kind of waned a little bit as people saw that he wasn't nailing that condition. Yeah. And I think if he can come in and be like, look, I fucking did it, people are going to ride that train again. Mm -hmm. So that'd be pretty cool. All uh, right. I, I would I would put him as the biggest potential to move up, you know? Yeah. Like, for yeah. him, it, like, you know, Samson already came sixth at the Olympia. Um, you know, he's got a lot of people thinking he's going to be right up there with Nick at this show where I think Andrew's not quite in that top three, you know, and he can absolutely be someone that 
can have the potential to move up in there if things go right, you know? I think Samson pressure wise is in a pretty good spot because people are, people already expect Nick and Rami to be one and two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he already lost to them at the Olympia. So he's like, all right, if I end up in third, you know, people, that's kind of what people think. Yeah. But if he starts to slip behind Andrew or Bonac or somebody else, then he's, then that's a problem. Yeah. He probably gained a lot of confidence after Olympia too. He oh, sounds, yeah. he sounds a lot more confident. He yeah. Sounds. He seems like it. He sounds much happier. He sounds more calm. And like that also could be contributing to the, the conditioning that we're seeing. Definitely. Like yeah. he's not he's not starving as much anymore because he was already in shape like going into this. So he's yeah, he's dieting, don't get me wrong, he's dieting hard. But yeah, I remember going into the Olympia, he was like fucking dying because he was no, so but you have to th- you have to think of that like extrapolation as well. It's like when you're not dying as mu- dying as much from your diet, you can train harder, you can train harder for right. longer time. Yeah, it's like you're you're getting double benefits from that, you know? Right. The conditioning yeah. is already there, and then you're getting a longer period with better quality training. It's like a double positive, you know? Yeah. Okay, are we making any other changes to this? I'll leave mine for now. I think I'm pretty good. Samson, Nick, Rami, Clarita, Andrew, Mike, who's Nick, Samson, Clarita. I might put Andrew ahead of Sean, but like for now, I'll just leave it. I, I, there's no reason for me to change it right now. So Yeah, I might make one small change, but not right now. You guys already both moved Sean down today. I won't add insult to injury, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this was... Maybe this was a stretch. Yeah. A, but he can beat him, you know, if he comes in 100%. Yeah. I think, Sean, the difference in detail, hardness, conditioning, even if Akeem is at his absolute best, is still pretty significant to me. Yeah. Like, Clarita is fucking, like, flawless from a peak standpoint, you know? It's just with, with being such such small stature, like, well, how's he going to stack up against these big guys? Yeah, no, I know. That's, that's obviously the biggest thing. But... Yeah. Hmm. Uh, all right, let's do some questions. Oh, but before we do questions, I want to show you guys this. It's another transgender singing on ice. I'm gonna fucking <laughs> penis nice. size. Penis for those listening on. I thought it was shrieking. Penis size is increasing. February fourteenth, studies show that average human penis length has increased twenty four percent of over the course of twenty nine years. So fucking that skipped my ass. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, are, weren't they just saying like last year that's because of all twenty four percent is a lot. Our really? cell phones and all this bullshit that dicks were shrinking. Yeah, well, I thought it was something with underwear. But before we get to that, I want to ask you this question: How do they do this study? Whose dicks are they measuring? Right, right. And who's honest about their size? They didn't ask us. Did they ask you guys? No, I'm just saying, like, if they called a hundred guys, how many of them were honest? Yeah. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, I got nine. They're like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go measure your dick. They're like, all right. So he goes and he's like, he measures four inches. He's like, yeah, it's fine. It's five. <laughs> <laughs> right. For sure. Like, unless you're measuring them yourself, that's yeah. pretty hard to see, you know? That's what I'm wondering. So I'm like, how the fuck do they get that number? Is it dead people? Or like, are they measuring dead dicks? <laughs> yeah. And like, what, what's, your, what's your sample? Like, what's your sample? What's their, I mean, getting back to the race card here, what's their, right. <laughs> yes. right. are, you, are you measuring black guys? Are you right, measuring... right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's not racist. It's stereotype because it's positive. Yeah. I saw a different study a while ago that dicks were getting smaller because of underwear. Yeah. I saw that too. Because of underwear. Yeah. Um, they talk about how, like in uh, like in tribal areas where oh, men don't wear underwear, they got huge dicks because there's nothing yeah. constricting them. <laughs> tribal, tribal dudes yeah. have longer cocks because they hang all day long. Right. Yeah. So basically, what they gravity is just do. pulling them down. Constantly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this study concluded the that this head of their dick is like a weight. Is right. Like a... <laughs> I remember this study concluded that, um, you know, for hygiene reasons, you still should wear underwear just to wear loose fitting boxers. For hygiene yeah. reasons, why? What does that do? Oh, you got. You, you got pants. You... Oh, you got pants. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, it's like circulation. Cool. I think it'd be more circulation, probably. Wait, why does yeah. hygiene? Why is it better, more hygiene to wear underwear? Well, because they're walking around naked outside, man. No, no, no. He's saying, <laughs> he's saying your pants. He's saying your pants. That's a, yeah, we should have a layer. He's saying it's traveling. more hygienic to wear underwear in your pants. And I'm like, yeah. I thought it was just a comfort thing. I don't think it's hygienic. I think it's both. I think you should have a layer of protection between, you know, your skin and <laughs> your uh I mean, I guess pants. it depends. It depends how long, like if you're washing your clothes every time you wear them, it shouldn't really matter, you know? That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, but, you like, know, you shirt or something. You should have a layer. I see in terms of, 
you know, health reasons for being naked outside. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Ian's stuck on the tribal guys. He won't let him go. <laughs> Put pants on these motherfuckers. Put pants on them. <laughs> Paul, Paul just said, if you shard or something, you need some underwear. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's... how's that good hygiene? You gotta, like, you gotta understand if you're, wearing, if you're wearing jeans, too, as a safety factor, right? You're gonna fucking zip yourself up like... That's true, too. Something about Mary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true, too. But it's not hygiene. It's comfort. I think it's hygiene, too. I don't think wearing underwear makes plus, you more hygienic. Plus, when you, when you, after you take a lot of girls, a lot of girls don't wear underwear to the fucking gym. They're not dirty. I know. I think most wear underwear. Uh, I don't know about no. that. Yeah. A lot of these new fucking girls, modern women, they fucking go to the gym. Modern no. woman. Uh, <laughs> no, Kevin Samuel, I love it. <laughs> modern woman. <laughs> they go to the gym. No underwear. Are you on? No G string. Just they but, put that shit on. They go to the gym. That's it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really. I, 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 I thought, you know, I mean, if a girl's. I'm just think think of it commonsensically. How much better would your hygiene be because you're wearing underwear? Because you got an extra layer between. Why does that make you cleaner? It doesn't get on your pants. What? (laughs) If you got piss or shit, it doesn't get on your pants. Yeah, but it's on your underwear. It's on your underwear still, though. Yeah. (laughs) It's It's still in your underwear. It doesn't make you cleaner. It may be like beneficial to your clothes. It's it's keeping your clothes potentially cleaner, but it's not more hygienic, per se. Well, you throw your underwear away if you dirty them, you know, where you can throw your pants away. Or you can wash them. (laughs) You can wash them. Or you can change your pants, though. It's the same. Paul's got 365 pairs of underwear. (laughs) I do got a lot. (laughs) Fuck these. They're dirty. (laughs) Paul's just throwing away underwear. Paul, you can just change your pants. It would be the same thing, technically. I, I, you guys got a point for sure, but I, I think it's. Listen, I think you I, I'm not layer. saying underwear is not good. I wear underwear, and but I'm just it, saying it, it, it'll keep your pants cleaner, but it's not necessarily more hygienic. There's a difference there. Okay, well, I don't want to get too graphic. <laughs> but like, no, no, you know, like when you've had a pair, you know, when you've had a pair of underwear for a while, you get sometimes you get a little. It starts to stain a little bit. I don't have white underwear, so I wouldn't know. I, well, I don't buy white underwear for that reason, but, <laughs> but I, I used to. I, I throw all my underwear out, so I don't. <laughs> all the white ones. <laughs> That's the one and done, one use and out. <laughs> well, here's my question to you: If if you if on a pair of white underwear, if you if you were to wear them, you would see some staining over a period of time, right? Sure. Potentially, yeah. Your point. But wouldn't that be wouldn't that be on your pants then if you're not wearing underwear? Well, yeah, but, yeah, but that's not a hygiene thing. That's just a keeping your clothes clean. Your ass is dirty. Like that's you're gonna have you're gonna have shit stains on your pants. Yeah, but you're still gonna have shit stains <laughs> on your underwear. It's not any different. No it's one sees my underwear though. But it's still like your hygiene. Just because you can shit your pants, no one's gonna see it. Yeah, it's, it's the same dirty. thing. Yeah, but I don't want no one to see my shit stains in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> not outside your pants. The point is you're still wearing a garment that's dirty. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, but, but I mean, you know, if you're at work or something, yeah, I got that one. <laughs> but if I'm at work or something, I can't change my underwear at work. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're. Maybe still- it's because I work like a regular nine to five, so it's different for me. No, it's not different for you. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I love when Paul. I love when Paul pauses because I know that <laughs> something's, coming, something's coming down the pipe. And even <laughs> I got nothing right now. <laughs> All I'm saying is, whether you shit in your underwear or you shit in your pants, it's the same hygiene. Yeah, yeah. I know. I get that. Okay. But there's some staining that goes on oh with God, underwear that you're protecting your pants from. But this is what I said at the beginning. I said there's a difference between hygiene and keeping your pants clean. You yeah. Know? Okay. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't make you a dirtier person. It just makes you have dirtier pants. Anyway, yeah, yeah. the point of the fucking story was these tribal guys <laughs> that don't wear any underwear have free flowing dicks and they end up with bigger dicks as they get older because they just hang all the time. Yep. So if that would be just, true. So basically, it true? it's I've true. I've seen a study. I feel like it would be your wait, balls wait, wait. to get more. <laughs> well, I want to know where you saw the study. Paul. I don't know if it was a study or a <laughs> podcast that I watched where someone was talking about it. I think it was on... <laughs> you heard it on Joe Rogan. <laughs> I think it was Rogan. I think it was Rogan, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I think it probably has to do something more with like exposed skin and like heat transfer and like some bullshit like that. You know? Wait. Uh, here. I would just say if you have a newborn son, now you know. Just keep him without underwear. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just keep away from my daughters. 
Does <laughs> Does not wearing underwear make your dick bigger? No. What's going on, guys? I just want to tell you about a new product I've been involved with for a little while. It's called Bash Mouth Gum, and it's a caffeine gum. So as you guys know, I love my coffee. I like to drink one or two coffees a day, but usually if I start to drink them too close, it gives me a little bit of a stomach ache, and I kind of get to feel a little bit jittery. With Bash Mouth, it's only 130 milligrams of caffeine, so it's and it's like a steady flow of energy because it's in a gum. So I don't get a jittery feeling. I just feel like a nice, clean long energy and this is actually what i use to get me through the five or six po hour podcast time that we did at the olympia so if you guys want if you're gamers if you want something during your workout you don't like that eaa breath or whatever or you're talking to a girl in the cardio machine and you don't want to stink like post-workout breath uh or if you just want some if you're on a long drive and you just want some constant energy this is the way to go guys check it out bashmouth.com for your energized Gum. Wait, I spelled dick wrong. <laughs> Google, why do tribal people have larger penises? Where did Ian go? Did we lose well, Ian? Yeah, he's gone. Does not wear. Wait. Ian's back. One second. I thought we oh. lost you. I thought we lost you there. What, what happened? happened? My screen just went black. Oh, all right. Well, okay. That's that's racist, man. <laughs> Does not wearing underwear increase size? No, it doesn't increase or help you to increase your size because whether soft or hard, the size of your privates is decided by other factors in your genetic makeup. Well, at least click, you... click on that, Fuad. What is the importance of wearing underwear? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? We haven't figured this out yet. Let's get to the no, bottom right. of this. Uh, up a little bit. Where? In the blueprint. See where, where it says? Yeah, right there. What is the importance of wearing underwear? <laughs> <See>? <laughs> underwear for guys does a few things. First of all, it helps keep your package in place, offer small barrier protection. That's what I was talking help, about. And help with a few sanitary issues. Huh? That's not, we we didn't disagree with that, but it doesn't make you cleaner. <laughs> well, read on. Semi-loose fitting underwear is generally considered the best as you give your penis room to breathe, but it isn't just flopping around all over the place. A small barrier protection can help with things like getting skin and hairs caught in a zipper, for example. And this will also help, depending on what type of pants you wear, your penis rubbing on some uncomfortable materials like jeans. Sanitary-wise, it's no there secret that many guys are bad at wiping and don't follow proper hygiene. Another reason why I highly support bidets as well. And where where would you rather have those track marks? In your underwear or on your pants? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> <That's a reminder. laughs> pants can always be resold and used as clothing no one wants their old underwear if you wear tiny ladies you can also experience chafing so this goes back to semi-loose style wow paul was right i want to yeah, see I how many other, how I'm many other a little people, bit right but wait a minute you how out. many other people viewed that article because i think we're the first fucking one <laughs> <laughs> no it's got 4.5 thousand views really? holy fuck wait a second we never said that you weren't right about it being cleaner sense making sense so you can throw your underwear away yeah but what i'm saying is it doesn't make you more hygienic because you shit your underwear and not your pants no i would agree it's uh like ian said it just stay it's just a it keeps your pants from getting stained yeah okay we can all agree on that <laughs> <laughs> mike's like mike's like how the fuck how the fuck they end up on this podcast <laughs> you gotta stay away from owning gray sweatpants if you're gonna rock that way you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, oh no, that's not what I want. Oops. Um, what are you googling now? You don't want to see what just came up. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I think I I got the right thing this time. The last one I wrote. Tribal men have big dicks, and then they got a whole bunch of, <laughs> got a whole bunch of porn. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so this one says, uh, African tribe men long penis. African tribe men long penis. African. No, yeah, but they, actually, they actually attach, like, weights to them, don't they? Oh, yeah. I think there is a thing about that. Yeah. No, this isn't. Oh, but click on that. What race of men have the largest penis size? Which <laughs> tribe is well endowed amongst <laughs> our... This is <laughs> porn, dude. What do you want? What do you want? This one, Paul? Yeah. 
which race of men have largest penis? Invalid. So this is just a blog, I guess. Eh? Yeah. Well, I'll just put my hubby in the pot. Not only big, but thick. And an artist with it. We are Hispanic. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> uh, okay. Let's do some questions. I'm glad we figured out the underwear situation. <laughs> we also figured out it was false, Paul. Well, not really. Can't wait to shit my pants tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> just throw those things right away, Mike. <laughs> No, just my pants. There's no underwear. Oh, no, no underwear. <laughs> okay. We haven't done questions in a long time. Let's see if there's any good ones. First one, I'm just going to go right down the list. In your mind, who's the next big name in each division? Ah, I don't want to do that. Who's the next big name in open bodybuilding? Well, big in what way? Like the next Mr. Olympia or? There's so many. Yeah. It depends how you. The newest you, big name in men's open is technically Derek. There. Derek. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, iced coffee hour. What does that mean? Every hour is iced coffee hour. <laughs> wow. If, Mike, when you order coffee, do you order the same coffee every time? Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. You, ever, you, ever, you ever change it post workout? You ever heard of uh, Paul's coffee philosophy? <laughs> No, but I want to. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do is, if it's oh, after go. a workout, <laughs> if it's get after ready. a workout, wait, get ready for this, Mike. <laughs> I'll have some sugar because my body can metabolize. But tell them how we time. arrived at. Tell me how we arrived at this. <laughs> One day we were going for a fucking ride. We we're going for a road trip up to Toronto, right? And he goes with me sometimes. So I'm like, let's go for a trip. We hit Starbucks. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you? I'm like, what are you gonna have? And uh, he's like, I don't know. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? What are you going to have? He's like, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to have cream today instead of milk or something. I couldn't remember what he said. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so then we get him his coffee. We leave this, the drive through I'm like, can you please explain to me how you don't know your coffee order? And then he gives me this philosophy. Yeah. So it depends on a lot of factors. Sometimes, <laughs> I, sometimes, sometimes, if, you know, if I'm a little full, I had a big meal. I don't want like a heavy cream. So I'll have milk. Um, lately I've been using oat milk because I've found dairy's been giving me some acid reflux. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, it's, it, it, it was happening to me. I was getting acid reflux. I thought it was from coffee. I talked to a few people and they suggested eliminating dairy. So I did and it went away. Um, and sometimes I have sweetener. Most of the time I have sweetener and once in a while, if it's after work, I'll have sugar instead of sweetener. So that's me. You're, you're yeah. a wild guy, man. Yeah, I know. I like to live on the edge. <laughs> It's about as crazy as my life gets now. My, co my coffee tastes nothing like coffee. There's so much shit in it, so it's just really? a production. <laughs> I love have? the, the post-workout coffee is the best. It's got to have two two sugars in it. Why, Paul? <laughs> it's not my insulin, so I, I want to spike my insulin after my workout, so I can better absorb the nutrients. I'm gonna have. You no, know, know it is true about that though. I guess the intake of caffeine with sugar helps uptake, like like in storage, yeah, but like massive amounts of caffeine. Like Nice post workout double double, you know, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slam that humalog in and go grab a double double. Yeah. <laughs> but you're right, caffeine does increase glycogen storage, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. If, well, no, not doesn't increase glycogen stores. It increases uh, glycogen uptake. Okay. I'm looking for something here. Fuck, and I cannot find it. It's killing me. What do you guys get at Starbucks? <laughs> You I get regular get, coffee. I get a, Americano. I get an Americano Black Three Splenda. It's like, what do you get, Ian? I don't really drink coffee, man. If I do, I'll just go get like a, like a fucking whatever. There, what's the, like, like, a, what's the, like basic ass like, coffee, you know? Yeah, like, <laughs> with like two, with like one or two sweetener, you know? Yeah, you, you don't go or, or like a cold a cold brew with two sweetener, you know? You don't yeah. drink that much. Um, you don't drink that much coffee, do you? No, I'm very like maybe the odd morning if I get up and Melissa's made something like, and I see it there, I might have a, like a cup. But even if I have it, I'll just like have it and dump like a random small amount of sweetener in it, black, and that's all I do. You know what I've realized about Ian? He has absolutely no vices, except for <laughs> except for cigarettes. Things over cigarettes. <laughs> Smoking a binge. pack of Marlboros a day. <laughs> Two packs. <of> <laughs> you, you don't binge eat at all, Ian. No, never, no. never, eh? I, I honestly, it, like I'm, I'm the opposite. Like I, if 
it's more enjoyable for me to not eat than eat, you know? Really? He likes to suffer. Yeah. No, I don't like to suffer. I, I'm exhausted with eating, you know? But there's never a time you want to go for pizza or burgers or something? Uh, not like really. I mean, like... Charcuterie boards. Like, if, well, yeah. I most, boards. If most of I go out to dinner, like, I'll eat. I don't, like, worry too much about what I'm eating. Like, I don't, like, yeah. try and order something healthy. I'm not like, ooh, get chicken, but no oil and fucking, you know? Like, I'm not doing yeah. that. Yeah, um, you don't you don't have a sweet like, tooth? Not really, man. I, I used to when I was younger, and since I bodybuilded and I like eliminated that from my diet so hard, it really, really went away. Like I never really, you know, kept that stuff in to like any degree. And it just like over time it just kind of dissipated. Like I used to love certain things and like, you know, like candy and ice cream and stuff like that. And now like my my sweet tooth and tolerance for it's just a lot lower. I like, almost I can... feel like when it comes to Ian. You know, when someone is like so driven to do something, yeah, that it's almost like they turn that mechanism off. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's like, not that it's not there. It's just like he's so driven to do this one yeah, thing. That this is so not focused. Even, it's I not just, even worth it. Yeah. Honestly, man, it's like, it, it, and it's also now just reinforced why I'm like, man, if I eat this shit, like, one, it's going to be harder to eat my good food that I fucking feel like I have to eat. You know? Yeah. It's like my job. Like I have to eat my food every day. That's like. That's not a hard job. But just to but just to right. just to touch on that though, just so people listening that do want to have a little bit of junk, I would always have that meal of the last meal of the day. So I was hungry and still hungry in the morning for my breakfast. Because I know I was the same way. If I had it like for meal four, it would fucking screw up my yeah. Then you miss. Meal. But I even eat like the next day, like fucking be my shit in my pants or something. Like you know, it's, <laughs> at this point, I even eaten so many like foods for so long. It's like if I don't eat stuff very often, it fucks me up now. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. Like, and look, if I want to eat something, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to do it, and I'll suffer whatever, and I'm I'm not going to complain about it. Um, but it's just like it it doesn't really like pop up in my mind. Like the other day, like last week, sometime I replaced one of my meals and I got Thai Express. But like that's like not that bad. Like I had like yeah, yeah, yeah patsu like noodles and double chicken and like you know that uh, shit. Yeah. But that's, yeah. Yeah. See, me and Mike have realized that if you eat enough shit, your digestive system actually gets better. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's accustomed to it. You actually have a lot of people. My, my, my body's like, "Where's the Timbits, man? Where the fuck, <laughs> fuck is this chicken breast?" Remember, <laughs> I said that. Rejects it. You guys had people in the comments agree with it. That's yeah. why. Okay, so Mike, you weren't on that podcast, but I we or maybe you were. I'm not sure, but we had a podcast where I said, "When I eat pizza, my digestive system is better. Like, I actually feel better. I might not to be gross, but bowel movements are better than eating clean food. You then when I and when I eat clean, everything gets fucked up." So yeah. Justin and Ian had a field day ripping on me. And then I look at the comments section the next day. And Everyone like agreed with him. 25% yeah. <laughs> of the people are like, me too, man. I need pizza. <laughs> there was even a guy or like one or two people in there that explained a, like a legitimate reason thing of sorts for it. Yeah. Well, oh, actually, the, I don't the, reason, the reason I brought it up was Chris Tuttle actually told, because he was helping me for a minute. He actually told me that there are people that need, obviously not pizza, but he said like a little bit of junk. So he was going to introduce things like a little bit of Rice Krispie treats or like something that could just, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really don't know the method behind it, but he said some people just do better with like a little bit of junk in their diet. Mentally or physically or both? No, no, no. He meant physically, like their, really? balance, their digestive system just functions better with yeah. just something small, right? Uh, but It's like an underproduction of enzymes or like an overproduction, you know what I mean? So you're having to your body's having to adapt to this different food, you could say. Oh, you're I more found efficient this, uh, at, at digesting. There's mm. a very, very intelligent woman named uh, Nat Gagnon, who you know. Yeah, I know Natalie. Yeah. yeah. And uh, she posted this. I want to show it to you. She posted uh, oat milk. I have said this from the get-go. Why in the world are you willing to drink glyph glyphosate, phytic acid, and spiking the bleep out of your blood sugar? Your life, existed, your life existed before this fake milk came onto the market. I bet you can live without it. If you want an alternative, I've, I would opt for goat milk, lesser and easier to digest, lactose from a cow, water, buffalo milk, 100% lactose free, or no sugar added coconut. Oh, coconut milk. I never thought of that. Yeah. I would try coconut milk. That'd probably be good. What about, water, sure. what about water buffalo milk? Yeah, where are you going to get that at? <laughs> That's probably hard to source. <laughs> I've had it. <laughs> really? Yeah, you can get it. Where like at Whole Foods or something? Yeah, like a Whole Foods store. They have it. Fuck yeah. Imagine, imagine next time, next time you go, you guys go to Starbucks. You and Paul record yourselves ordering that. 
Okay. Water, <laughs> I want water buffalo milk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, can I get a you know uh, a, two shots of uh, americano, blah blah blah, with a uh, you know blah blah water with, buffalo milk. Water, yeah. With, yeah, with water buffalo milk, please. You no, know, you know what, Paul? Uh, ben already explained this to you because. Paul was drinking yeah. the, the what were you drinking the non fat it was it, it was like a it was like a flavored uh sugar free cream that's what it was and when Ben yeah. said he went to whole milk or full fat cream or whatever it his digestive is a uh, what's it what's it called his um acid reflux acid he's reflux. right because I bought because I, I I started going back to milk now a little bit oh, uh, I got some three percent I just want to try it I got some three <laughs> percent <laughs> what's three percent called? Yeah. Uh, is that is that full fat? Come on, uh, call, so, call something homo. else. It's homo. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's homo milk. <laughs> it's fine. No, my, like my, mom, my mom eats like crazy healthy, like competitor level healthy almost. But she keeps like that's the one thing she still drinks full fat cream in her coffee multiple times yeah. a day. Really? Yeah. It's probably better for you in the long run. Like, yeah. or whatever. Isn't there, like, isn't there a lot of CLA in milk fat? No idea. Uh, Could be. I saw that somewhere. You read that somewhere. I did. Some study somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was a study, but. <laughs> 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 professor, <laughs> professor Rogan. <laughs> if you had to pick. Oh, by the you... way, this is a good time. What do you mean? All these fucking crazy UFO sighting things. Uh, we, me, I, I, me and Flip were talking about it today. Yeah. Like balloons. They're balloons. not Balloons. They're not balloons. There's one balloon, and the other ones are just unidentified objects. Yeah, what, what do you think they are? There's been like four or five of them now. I think it's bullshit. Whatever it is, I think the government's trying to distract us from something. I agree. Yep. That's what I think. I'm like, come on. Why all of a sudden? What do you think yeah. they're trying to distract us from? All of a sudden now, they, they couldn't detect these balloons before with the radars, but now they can. I and all of a sudden, you can shoot them out of the sky, but you couldn't shoot on the sky any other fucking time. They're too advanced. Yeah, I'll like, you're just, you're just pegging them off like fucking. And you've yeah. shot them out of the sky, but you still can't still can't tell us what they are. Yeah, and they missed one shot. How do you miss a balloon? Yeah, it's not <laughs> a balloon, man. Well, whatever. How do you miss something that stands still? A couple of ones they shot over the water. They said they haven't recovered yet, but then they shot some like over other places where they did recover. Are you right? kidding me, man? If they, when it comes to like collecting military material stuff like that, if they shot something that they thought was. And more advanced, yeah. whether it came from another country or they not, it. they do everything together. Yeah, they would, right. have, they would scour the fucking earth to find whatever the fuck it was. This is bullshit. Okay, because of, of rough weather conditions up in like outside Alaska or wherever the fuck they shot it down, you know? Yeah, I don't buy I, it. I don't know. I, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're hiding. I don't know if it's because all the war shit that's going on, all the money they're spending, and they want to just mm -hmm. get, people, get people's Distract. attention away from it. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't know, but I just don't think it's, I don't think it's exactly what they're telling us. Let's just say that. I agree hundred percent. Nothing ever is. No. <laughs> I'm plus in the last month, for some reason, my TikTok has been like. It's nothing but aliens. <laughs> it's, been a it's nothing but aliens. <laughs> Seriously, bro. honestly, my, my TikTok. That's where they're saloon. infiltrating. That's where the conspiracy and no, the no, fucking propaganda is coming. <laughs> yeah. My TikTok is UFOs, fucking. Uh, Bigfoot. Don't forget Bigfoot and and Giants. No, it's giants. Giants. guys yeah, telling, Giants. Really? Guys telling cops that they can film wherever they want. <laughs> and uh and uh flat earth. There's this I, one going I, around you know, like like ancient aliens, old Egypt shit and the and like UFOs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You guys see the one that was like in I think it was in Alberta or whatever, and the guy was filming like a mountain line, like just mountains in the distance. And there's a figure, a figure standing on top of that. the crest of the, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's like it's a fucking human. It's moving, and then he so he's like he goes back the next day, tries to drive up. They stop and tell him to turn around. Then they're in front of his house, and they're like, "Dude's dead." What? It's like what? Really? What is going on? What? Saying it's a, an ancient Nephilim, like a, these giants that used to roam the earth, and this guy caught it on camera. Oh, they've been awesome. hiding all these years. Did you yeah, guys see all the stuff they're doing with holograms though? Now, yeah, yeah. Project look at Project Bluebeam. That's, that's I, the that's, one I was see, reading you're, about. You're yes, looking at the crazy shit that I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah. I forgot the name Project of Blue Beam. Blue Beam. Ian? That's the. Uh, oh, I haven't heard of this. What is this? Oh, uh, like, it's crazy. It's some serious hologram shit that we're all fucked for. <laughs> yeah, like the. Yeah, they'll, 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 they'll project the. They'll, they'll project Jesus. They'll project yeah. Jesus in the sky and make you think Christ is coming. Yeah, he'll yeah. look exactly like him and floating around and whatever the fuck. Maybe an yeah. alien ship. Who knows? 
Like, <laughs> like I was just saying, like the AI is getting fucking wacky now too. Bro. Oh, and I was reading like the way they're programmed is already kind of biased. Chat GPT is fucking crazy what you can do with that kind of shit. Chat, uh, yeah, Chat GPT. Uh... Uh, let me go back here. Well, I, okay, you're just showing me a picture of it. What is it? No, no, no. I know. I'm gonna it's read. A, it's a like a theory, I guess. <laughs> <clears throat> U.S. shoots down mystery uh, objects, speculations over aliens, Project Blue Bean Grow. Uh, let's see if I can get to like the, the... talks of this bizarre gear. Okay, let's just go right to it. It's been talked about for a while. <laughs> Got like a synopsis here somewhere. Project Blue Bean is a longstanding but unproven conspiracy theory. Canadian investigative journalist Serge, Mo Serge Monast First talked about the theory in the mid-1990s. The theory, fuck off with this. <laughs> the theory, which was resurfaced again, claimed that the project was created by agents of the Pentagon and NSA. 94, Monast alleged the investigation piece of the United Nations and NASA were aiming to create a new age religion, basically a one-world religion. Uh, Monast was arrested twice in 95 and 96. He died of a heart attack. Sure he did. That's always the way these people die, heart attacks. Yeah, after his death, the theory remained popular. There was no evidence of proof substantiating the allegations. Uh, that doesn't really tell Ian what it is. YouTube will have stuff. Yeah, you might not be able to find it on through a Google search. Well, well just try and, try and give me a synopsis on your own words. They're basically creating holograms in the sky that look so real that you can't tell that it's a hologram. So like Ooh, when they say... They're saying it's a NASA project. Yeah, UN. And, yeah. and to get us to believe in these things. Yes. To, okay. Yeah. So whatever believe it may be. In, believe in flying saucers. And they're trying to create like a, and this is obviously all the conspiracy shit. This isn't necessarily something I believe, but they're trying to create a one world religion. Now, wouldn't it be a lot easier if they just came out and said, we have found a UFO from another planet. It's not from our planet. Instead of this like dicking around, like you're just done. We found yeah, it. it. Yeah, but they got from another they planet. Got, now you all believe in aliens. You have to. Yeah, yeah you got to scare people. It. It's proven at that point. Yeah, you can fucking make up some bullshit. I mean, like whatever. Yeah. You know? But also, if you have to understand oh. that, if, if they were to come out and say, "This is what happened. This UFO crash," you understand it would collapse religions. Yeah. Some religions would collapse. Right. And it would right. cause mass panic <laughs> in the world, right? But that's so, kind of what they're trying to accomplish, aren't they? Yeah. Not really, yeah. because yeah. If, you, if you scare the fuck out of people first, then they're probably you have to, you have to than, ease them into it. You're more likely to yeah. do one. To all get together, to thing. Sure, yeah. You're more likely I mean, to get them to herd together, no? If you scare right. the fuck out of them, because the people will cling to something if they're if they're yeah. scared. Um, I don't know. It's we're, all we're gonna have. We're all having agents visit our house after this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. This is gonna take it down right away. <laughs> Shut the fuck up about that, guys. <laughs> for YouTube's purposes, well, actually, for real, I don't know if I believe in any of that shit. So don't fucking demonetize me. But um... <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> Um, we're, we're racist and we're conspiracy theorists. Why is that? Oh, finish. Why am I Have you guys seen these cop videos where the cop, like the guy, will be in a public building filming, and the cops will be like, "You got to leave," and the guy will be like, "I don't got to leave. This is public domain. I can film here if I want." Have you guys seen these videos? No. Seen these. Is that a thing that's going on right now? God, they just won't stop coming up on my fucking feed. Really. <laughs> And it's, I think it's because I get so angry that I watch them and I'm waiting yeah, for If you watch longer <laughs> yeah. in the video, I know, I know, but I want the cop to punch the guy in the face and that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I know those videos are going to annoy me. So the second I see it, I'm like, I don't want to watch the shit. I know? can't yeah. understand why somebody would just be an asshole for no fucking reason. Yeah. To be a hero in front of his friends or something or uh, who knows. He's like, I, I got I to gotta keep the cops in line. I'm like, good, buddy. You took a video at a public building. Yeah, it's like he doesn't. Yeah, even I know. Care. He doesn't even care about taking the video of what he's taking of. He just wants to stir shit up. You know? Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you had to pick one machine to use for the rest of your life, one machine. machine? One machine Smith. to use for the rest of your life. Smith machine. That's what I was going to say too. Which one? Smith machine. Smith. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Or the or the multi cable station. No, yeah. he said no cables. He said no cables. Oh, okay. Then I will go smooth. Yeah, because I mean, you could do all your pressing. You could do squatting. You could do bent over rows. I mean, you could do almost. You could do a curl on there if you really wanted to. Yep. Drag yeah. curl. You can do everything. Triceps. You know. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. You can it's literally train everything. You could even hook it at the top and do fucking pull ups on it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, agree. Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, I saw you post something the other day. I I was I didn't watch it all the way through. 
It was something about barbell rows. Do you agree with barbell rows, like barbell rows, or don't like barbell rows? No, I agree with them. I was just saying that the, the people, the guys that are doing them, it was just this argument that, like, I'm sure you guys have all heard it. It's like when someone so says, has been told, your back needs to get better. They automatically rush to the staples of what gets my back better. Yeah. So it's like you got a heavy barbell row, might be a deadlift, might be some type of one arm row, a pull down, whatever it is, right? Yeah. But yeah. there's these like staples that people have in their mind of like this is the key to it. Sure. And then they and then of course with the barbell row, it's like how much weight can I get on there and can I fucking air fuck for three reps and put down? <laughs> you know what I mean? And instead of like under I was just showing like if you get yourself in a position where you're maybe less lowering the weight and allowing like full extension of your Latin arm or roll up through. Instead of just this like cranking up into upper upper trap and delts and everything, I agree. Yeah. Bent over rows are probably consistently one of the most poorly done exercises I see. Yeah, yeah. people do that jerking. It's, just, it's wanna, just like this whole this whole thing of like trying to like get people to like, understand that like it, you you can see Dorian Yates doing those four plate bent over rows. You ain't fucking Dorian Yates, dude. Like, and you're not controlling that weight like he has, and he started somewhere. He let me uh, just let me play this magically clip. appear. Yeah. Let me play this clip, like so people know what we're talking about. Wait a minute. What am I sharing here? Oops. Sorry, guys. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> oh, I don't have anything private on my page. I don't care. I just I didn't. I don't want to kind of get a little bit target this. Oh, I got to press this fucking thing. So I'm gonna come over here and do a bar. One more time. So I have a problem with my lats and my back development. So I'm gonna come over here and do a barbell row. Instead of doing a barbell row with super light weight and understanding that I can get here and posture up and rock through and get full contraction by rolling up off my quad, letting my lat hang, rocking up through, I'm gonna do this. Put too much weight on there. Well, I can't, I could never get in that position and hold it and just go like this. Okay, I want to ask you a question. So when I do my barbell rows, most of the time I'm at the depth that you were at to begin with. But whenever I watch Dorian Yates do that row, he's more upright, which never felt right to me, which is kind of what you're saying here. Yeah. But it's an understanding too, like it's it's getting these people, getting people to think like understanding that you can get in these postures and create full development. But like you guys understand as well, if we understand the full range of something, I can now understand the half range sure, or like a three quarter range or a quarter rep. That's how we all get understand how to move better and keep tension. Right. Sure. So it's like start yourself with this. If you're someone who's lacking back development, let's understand our full range of motion before we start fucking around with this, like, like nice. abbreviated ranges of motion. Do you know nice. what I mean? So it's like, I'm thinking, I'm talking to these people and more in the lines of like, oh, I'm just in a rush to get my back bigger. Well, fucking throw weight on there and just fucking, as long as I'm clanking it up and down, something's happening, right? Yeah. Where yeah. you see these guys that have that mentality that don't understand the path of movement and understand like tension and like tempo and how we're moving properly. They're just going to, it's going to be this end of thing where I'm like, if my lats are my problem, I'm not getting much lat doing that. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. get a lot of upper back and I'm going to, I'm going to enhance what's already great. But I'm not working on what shit yeah. because I'm not yeah. taking the time to like drop my ego a bit and be like, okay, like even I if think, it was an underhanded row, you know what I mean? I think, okay, so ego is a problem, but I also think I can probably think of five bodybuilders with good backs off the top of my head that do the chicken clucking shit where they're like just snapping the bar and trying to catch it. Yeah, but, you yeah. Gotta, you gotta but, they, but, they, but they have great backs. So to yeah. To a young kid watching, he's like, "Well, maybe that's the way I got to do it." Yeah, yeah, but that's also it's also a misconception because he might be doing the chicken clucking shit and his barbaro suck, but his dumbbells are insane. Well, it might and also you also yeah. have to work by the ex by the rule, not the exception. You know? No, no, no. The, what mm -hmm. I, what I was going to say is his back, like those people might be predisposed to already having a good back, so they can get away mm -hmm. with half-ass mm -hmm. back training. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, watching doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now what I said in the next clip that is attached to that because it's a part two, it's like I said to the people, you're the byproduct of doing that that poor style of row could be of an advantage in the sense that you could develop massive erector strength and massive erector development 
Yeah. So it's yeah. not a wash where it's like, oh, you just don't do that. It's like, yeah, if you're holding 405 in front of you and you're only cranked down about a quarter of the way and you're rocking up, something's got to keep you upright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're going to see like this mm-hmm. development of these erectors busting out of your lower mid back, but it's still not going to address the issue with lats and the sense that they're, the lat development is going to come from doing things that are far more isolating than a barbell rope. Yeah, I got right? it. So it's like just trying to get people to, to to get out of this thinking that like these these just blanket movements elicit blanket back development they don't right outside like i'm sure you, the box of that yeah. yeah i'm sure you guys could all agree like if you had to pick if someone said to you what i'm gonna what do you do for your what would you rather do for your lats a barbell row or one arm dumbbell row i would, would say one arm i would say dumbbell. Dumbbell. yeah but if you if you were truly just trying to isolate lat would you still say the same thing or would you dumbbell say row. dumbbell that's only because anecdotally i never felt one arm dumbbell rows the way i felt barbell like, barbell rows have always been great to me like Barbell yeah. rows, T-bar rows, I always felt them phenomenally. Yeah. I want one arm dumbbell rows. I really have to focus to get my lat. More often than not, I end up getting some Terry's, some rear delt, a little bit of bicep. I just don't ever feel like I can really. Me, get... I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'll come up to Windsor and train you and Paul one day. <laughs> I love that. Listen, I'm, I'm sure there's, I'm sure, I'm not saying. That's not like a challenge. I just want to go to Windsor. No, I'd right? love for you. Guys. I love that. That'd be great. Anytime. <laughs> awesome. Fucking have a great time. We got to have a pizza after. No, yeah, but, yeah. Um, no, the, uh, like I said, it's anecdotal for me. When I get a barbell and I can row it, I almost just feel like a perfect connection with it. Yeah. I was the same way when I, when I lifted, like I said in the video too, it's like when I was competing and I was bodybuilding big time, that was my staple. Yeah. But for some people like, these guys who have like they have great backs they might have like fucking fantastic upper backs but it's like we're talking about samson he's missing that lower lat yeah that now comes down to like we need to get into like sniper mode and like not think about this overall development and this massive movement we have to address why that area isn't fucking working yeah so we got to find angles that work we got to find machines that work or like cables or something that allows us to get like motion through that through that area because this overall pulling is just going to make what's great already better, but right. it's not going to address these little finite details, right? Mm-hmm. So you so, think, so, and I'm not challenging you, I'm actually curious. No, no. So you think on a, what's that thing they use when they measure muscle activation, like when they're doing, like when they're actually studying MRI? it? Don't they use MRIs for that? I don't know. It's like, is it EMG or something like that? Oh. Yeah, I know what you mean. The current going through the. Yeah, the current, right? So if you were saying like a one arm dumbbell row, you're saying you get more activation out of the lat than you would in a in a just a barbell row. Yeah, I I personally think that. You personally do, or you think it just blanket statement like it's a better movement to isolate the lat? Yeah, just because just because the way that I would approach my my dumbbell row with one arm would I would allow for more overall. Yeah, see, this is this is re- recruitment of a recruitment of my lat. So I understand with the way I move and the way I'm sequencing my movement, I'm connected to lat instantly through that motion and it lengthened right away yeah so if i'm if i'm already connected at full lengthen there's no way i'm not dragging up through full range of motion i'm not activating more is is that so is there as much is there as much stress on the entire back no but is there as much stress more stress on my lat yeah i believe that i think i think 100 percent. yeah hmm so because of the flexibility you can yeah i just think that people People like forgets like we talked about how like Keen was like opening his back and then rolling. He wasn't ripping his back open. Yeah. Well, wait a second, guys that guys that do these like these rear lat spreads where they're ripping their back open. Yeah, you'll notice that a lot of those guys don't have like this like almost like unfolding of the back where it's yeah, like yeah. Boom, pieces because yeah. they don't understand that there is like I can let my lat hang here and I can lock on my lat and then I can move through my lat. I don't have to move anything else in my back. Yeah, in the sense that I understand my motion and allowing me to just rock on what I perceive to be predominantly more lat than anything else. Obviously, other things are working, right? Let me ask you this question, Mike. So, if there's more isolation in the one arm dumbbell, does that mean to you that you'll get more size out of that movement than a barbell row? I believe so. Size in the lat. In the yeah. Row. Okay, but yeah. I'm talking. I'm talking very spe- very specifically into like parts of the back. If I'm talking about overall the back development in terms of like trap, like upper trap, rhomboids, rear delts, everything that is on the back of my body, 
Will I recruit more overall? Like, think about it as a shotgun blast compared to a sniper rifle. Yeah, but when we're talking about guys who are just starting out, yeah. if I got a beginner who's coming to me, mm. I'm saying I want that whole back to grow. So it's kind of like saying I can probably get more measurement of contraction out of a leg extension. He said, he said in the video for people that have an issue with their lats. Yeah, but if you're a beginner, you might have an issue with your lats. You don't know yet. Sure, right? but it's, it's are it's you talking about specific. are you talking are you talking about pros? Are you talking about good people that are just training? Oh, that that specific instance was talking to pe people who have like a, a history in the sport, so they have like a they have a specific weakness, which let is me, like. Let me make my point for a second. So, if you have a leg extension, it's going to measure more contraction than a squat, right? But the squat is going to develop bigger legs. You're going to isolate. You're going to isolate the quad more with the leg extension. It's going to probably get more contraction. Yeah. You're going to get bigger. I don't. The, there's the thing is, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't ever say. I would never in my life say that you should do this as opposed to that. Whereas sure. things things have have a right place and a right time, and there's tools for everything. 100%. So I wouldn't say I'm I'm going to go build this house. I'm only taking this hammer. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Whereas I might need a screwdriver, but I'm just bringing the fucking hammer because yeah. fuck it, I'll pound the screw in if I have to. Right? Cool. Yeah. It, that's the same analogy of like I would teach these fundamental lifts, or I probably wouldn't like some stuff. I would leave out because I just personally don't like it. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. for a beginner. I don't think a beginner. I think a beginner learning how to like do these fundamentals that everyone talks like squat, deadlift, bench for a bodybuilder, a beginner, I don't do them. Okay. At all. Okay. Why? I don't know why. I, I don't oh, know why I would. Because I'm under, yes, you understand why well, you need to know this. Like, no, I need, those are things I need to know. Those three main lifts that people start with are the most technically advanced lifts in all, in all of lifting. They, mm -hmm. the most work goes into those three lifts to compare to any lift we do. Yeah, and no, you're telling me the, the, the beginner, yeah, the beginner should learn that right away. No, you should teach the beginner how to move and feel the muscles and target before we ever think about putting a sequence of movement together and just hoping that we're pulling or hoping we're engaging the right things, right? Makes sense. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be predisposed to use what you're strong with naturally. So if you I told Ian and Ian's never trained before, I said, We're gonna do deadlifts today, you're gonna fucking bend over and you know, drive your hips up and stand up. He's his body's gonna be like this is a lot easier if I pull more with my arms than I actually use my leg drive, yeah. right? But that would be wrong. Yeah. But he's gonna his body's gonna pre like pre naturally predisposed to what its strength is, right? So I'm saying why don't we teach you how to feel these muscles that we're targeting instead of a barbell squat to start? Let's start you on a hack squat. Okay, but we've teach, gone, okay, but wait a minute. So, yeah. so we've gone way off. So I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna ask one question, you though. When yeah. you're saying about the quad extension creating more tension in the quad than a squat. I, I don't necessarily agree with that. Maybe if you're talking about relative to the exact same amount of load, but you can use a substantially bigger load when you're doing a squat or leg press than with a quad extension, which I think in turn could create the same amount of or more stimulus and contraction through a, a muscle. But I don't, I don't know if this is, I mean, obviously it's to scale, right? Like you're not, I'm not going to say if you squat 800 pounds, yeah, but what's what's the scale? A two hundred pound quad extension or a five hundred pound squat? No, what's like I'm saying, like if they do a measurement, like a like a electric like electric measurement on your fucking quad, and you're trying to isolate the quad, you're going to be able to isolate the entire quad with a, a stronger contraction with an isolation movement, like a leg extension. Well, you're going to be able to sure isolate it to that. See, this is the thing. You're 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 conf you're kind of mixing two things together. Will you be able to isolate? The quad more, yeah. yes. yes. But does that mean you're going to create more or equal tension in the quad? Not necessarily. You're just not also using other muscles. So yes, you're isolating. That's the word isolating is okay. only the quad. But when you're doing, say, a squat with under the same amount of tension, let's say you're doing a one rep, wait, a one rep max squat or one rep max quad extension, you're using way more muscles in the squat, but I think the tension you could create on the quad might be the same or more. But I might be able to use the same argument on a barbell row or a T-bar row. How so? <clears throat> because I'm going to be able to use a lot more weight on a barbell row than I am on a dumbbell row. Uh, yeah, but, you're, but the thing is, you're you're making this assumption that the added weight is the added benefit. No, yes. I'm making the assumption that if your form is the same, the added weight is the added benefit. <laughs> 
I'm not. Okay, but then, but then, we, but the thing is, then we get into like because the thing is, if we start getting into comparing, like, like let's just go with the barbell row and dumbbell row. You're getting now. We're getting into like ranges of motion and being able to actually move through an entire range of motion or actually come out of posture and actually create more tension, right? Yeah. Whereas in barbell, I'm in a fixed plane in terms of my ability to let that bar sit and be able to get back up through and use all these massive stabilizer muscles to even hold that barbell in place, right? So I think that like isolating, I agree with you, you might, you'll might you isolate more muscles in the quad doing a leg extension that's isolate. focused and really driven into the quad. Yes. And you can you can create that much amount of tension doing squat too, but the squat, the tension is more displaced over the whole body. Yeah. And yeah, so I mean, so like we're toning in on an area, like we said, with the sniper rifle, we're killing one shot as opposed to shotgun blasting all this stuff. Not to say we shouldn't shotgun blast shit because it all adds to the overall musculature of the body. If we're doing like things like squats, barbell rows, where we're so getting like erector strength. So your premise is so for somebody, so where this is all in context of somebody with a bad back or with lagging areas in their back. No, this is in context when we when we drifted off to the concept of like a beginner or like someone who's learning. Yeah. But in terms of someone who's had a bad back and lacking, and let's say they have a fucking fantastic physique, they're Samson. Yeah. And let's just use him as an example. Nothing's wrong with the guy, but like you're saying, like we wish you had a little more lower lat development. Yeah. 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 It's like we all know we don't need to worry about the overall. He can barbell row and do all this t-bar rows like crazy. But let's get him in an angle where we're like getting him out of posture and like blocking his shoulder down and getting to roll through just that lower lap. Yeah. But and then it, understand, but, but understand, it, sorry, but once once we understand where that lat is now, yeah. When he can actually engage it and there's some type of like tensile tension going on in there, he understands where it is now. Yeah. Then we bring him back to bar row rows and T bar rows and he's like, oh fuck. Now I understand where I need to pull from more because yeah. I understand more parts of my back. Because, because my learned. back, my back isn't just one piece. Yeah, yeah, it's all these intricate pieces that move together and need to like breathe and close or rock back and bend. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they don't. It's not a. It's a so dynamic thing. So your philosophy then, if a beginner came to you, would be to say, "You're you're more apt to say, let's get through some isolation stuff first, so you can feel each muscle before getting yeah, into." Yeah, let's let's make yeah. you like let's make you have any let's make you have some type of muscle and body awareness. Before we tell you to do this, this and chain of movements that's hard, right? Well, which makes sense too, because if you think of any other know, discipline, wait. you're not learning like the most complex portion of it. You're learning it in small bits and stages, right. skating or doing a backflip or like whatever. Hey, wait, but wait a minute, I wasn't going to disagree. What I was going to say is, I've done four hundred fucking podcasts, and I've had numerous coaches and whatever else on here. No one's ever said that, and that makes the most sense. It does make a lot of sense learning every single person i've ever had oh, on yeah. any yeah, credibility yeah. in training like, science they've all like credit get the compound movements right yeah even and that's, that's and you guys you guys know from having years of lifting like i said those compound movements are the you're still mastering them to this day and how advanced are you right you still don't have it down yeah i don't i, I still can't deadlift i i fucking and there's <laughs> still people who deadlift but no but like they no, but you're right. Time. Like they, you they can, tweak you their can back. Someone, yeah, you can put someone on a leg press or a quad extension or a hand curl and get them to feel and be successful in that movement. But putting them to a technical barbell squat right off the yeah. hop is a way more intricate and advanced movement for sure. Yeah, yeah but, Ian, like, but, never, that but Ian, yeah, you've never thought of it like that. We've always thought, no, never. Yeah, get in there, start doing the compound shit, build yeah. some muscle, and then worry about like Luke used yeah. to have. A fam- Luke used to have a famous saying. Stop worrying about using a scalpel and get out the broad brush. <laughs> and, and, and it was true because, listen, most guys are in the gym. The reason, the context Luke used to say it in was, you see all these guys on Instagram creating these fancy exercises. Sure. And Luke would always say, like, put some fucking weight on the bar, get sit down in the leg press, and do some work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, there's, there's, another, there's another video I made that's just talking about, like, that adage, that idea that you have where it's like, just get in and move the weight. It's like, and you'll grow. Yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah. We all know you'll grow. You guys are living examples. I'm living examples. I didn't live properly my whole fucking life. That's why I'm so fucked up right now. Right. Yeah. But it's like, you have to understand, like you, you're going to grow and then it's going to get to the point. So say we're, you're at the level that, that you guys are at like pro, like hovering around top amateur pro. And you step on stage with a guy like 
Florida. Yeah. And you're like, fuck, man. Like, I'm big as shit, and I got all this fucking muscle. My fucking tricep sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the fuck's going on with my tricep, because all I do is the same thing I do for my chest and my back and my legs, is I just fucking hammer those tricep extensions down. When if I got my arm off my body and I let my tricep actually work, I would engage it. But yeah, I'm yeah. too afraid because there's only 20 pounds on the fucking cable. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. So it's like I have to understand that, like, taking these steps back, like, it's okay. Like, yeah, you built this big frame. You built this massive house. Now I want to insulate it well. I want to have good fucking windows. And I don't want my roof to fucking leak. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want I don't want this house to be shit. I want it to be solid in every angle, right? So, yeah. like, it's, it's understandable why they tell people to do this stuff at the start. Because they're trying to build this base. But yeah. why not start you on the right path right away? Yeah, it's like going into a boxing gym. If you guys ever take boxing, if any boxing trainer is worth their fucking salt at all, you will not throw a punch for like two months. Yeah, it's footwork. Yeah, move your feet, move your feet, move your feet, shuffle, move your feet, move your feet. Then it's jab, jab, step with your jab, jab for months and months and months. But in bodybuilding, it's like just it's the analogy of them like, you want to box? Well, go fucking spar that guy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't even know how to throw a punch. I think a good point. Isn't there something to, and this is just a way out of left field. Isn't there something to building connector muscles, stabilizer muscles, like learning how to balance weight, like starting a beginner all on a machine and then getting them from a machine oh, into a this squat. Is, or... This is what I'm saying. I wouldn't, like I said, there's tools that we, it's like bringing things in as they come. So sure. let's say like, Let's say legs for example. I start today and I show up. What do we do? Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, so let's say we're going to do legs. Let's get you. I do some type of hip stuff at the beginning where I work on glutes because people just don't activate their glute at all. Like not that it's like this fucking thing. You have to be mythical. It's just, let's do some glute work. Let's walk with some bands. Let's get the fucking blood flowing and let's move on to like extensions. You're going to die because you're fucking, you don't do extensions well and your quad's going to fire for the first time ever. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, now the most technical thing we might do that day that requires you to stabilize is a fucking lunge. That's okay. difficult for people who have never worked out before. They yeah. have no idea what that is. Sure. They're taking a step out and having to stabilize their body. You're telling if that person comes in, this is a side point. If that person comes in and they can't do a lunge, you're a fucking asshole if you throw them in the spot rack. Because they can't even support their own weight. You're right. And you're telling them now to put a bar on their back, Sense. bend over, stand up. It's like, this dude can't even walk. So this why is, are you having him in the squat rack? It's yeah. crazy because like I never thought of it. But then like I think back to when I would PT and like when you would get people like that, you're not throwing them in hard movements like that. You're like taking fucking baby steps. But yeah. then when we talk about like everybody else, it's like just jump into it. It's well, when we talk about oh, we talk about bodybuilding, we put them in different categories. We're like, yeah, no, it's ridiculous. But they're, oh, they're not any different. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot. You know what, Mike? I'm happy we brought that up because that's the first time, honestly, in, yeah. in two and a half yeah. years anyone's ever said that yeah it so, makes total sense too that's like the biggest thing i like when i'm talking to people or i put videos out it's like like and you guys can probably attest to it there's been this formula like you guys said you've heard this there's been this formula for lifting and how things should be done for so long and no one knows where it started it's just been accepted as this is what we do but yeah. if you start to think for yourself and be like oh man like i just want to feel this muscle the person doesn't even know what how many muscles in their quad the amount is in the name yeah do you know what i mean so it's like i just want to feel the front of my leg i want to feel the back of my leg and now i want to understand like what it feels like to bend my knees because i don't even do that that often a few yeah. of us bend our knees at all yeah. yeah right so it's like let's get them doing these working things and then it's like now we can introduce things like let's see how you squat yeah let's see how you feel because now you're at least aware of what's going on down here yeah. Then we can work on how we stabilize up here, but we already have been because we've been doing stuff that teaches you how to engage your back and shit, right? So Funny. it's this process that leads to like leads to the ends of being able to introduce these things, but we're we're further along in our development before we bring them in because yeah, yeah, yeah. we have a greater understanding of what they are once we start. Like if I'm a boxer and I start jabbing and hitting the bag and hitting mitts, when the when the coach throws me into spar, at first it's just jab sparring. There's no right hands. It's just jab, jab, move, jab, jab. Or some guys, he throws a combo, you block, you throw a combo back, you block. You just get used to getting hit. Yeah, That's all it is in bodybuilding too, but everyone's assumed that it's just like fucking jump in the deep end, man. 
Yeah. 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 But I don't think I, I, I don't think people look at it as jump in the deep end. I think a lot of people and I'm not saying like I said, I'm not saying anything you're saying is wrong. I don't. I'm just I'm just making a case for them. I think a lot of people look at it like, look, this is a basic foundational movement. Yeah. If you can get this right, then you are set on <clears throat> everything else. You know, yeah, but the thing is, when you try and, when you do that, and you don't have any, you don't have any foundation of information or like being able to use your muscles or move your body. Like I said, you're going to be predisposed to doing shit fucked up. That's fucked up. Shit's going to carry over into the new shit you do. Mm-hmm. It's going to carry over into isolation work you do, because this overdevelopment of shoulders and traps and all this stuff, you see people as soon as they pick up weight with like whether it's, say it's a chest supported row, it's this. Yeah, that's it's Paul. Not. Paul does that. Okay. But it's like literally like, don't be here, just set and let your body take the weight through and pull. Yeah, my my biggest problem is yeah, I shrug. I I, first I got this thing too, and I'm probably it's gotten worse as I gotten worse. I have a shoulder issue, so I think I protect it like uh, bracing itself. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. but the uh, thing is, you need to lock down and you need to lock down in mid lat and understand that where your where my arch is and where my lat locks down. This is this is my access point, not not rocking over shoulder. He does, Mike. I just have to remind him because he'll. Yeah. I'll be like. I revert back to it. Drop your shoulders. He'll drop them, and then it's like he's like you said. He's trying to brace himself. Maybe his shoulders bothering him. Yeah. Next thing, he's back up here. Yeah, yeah, I have a bad right shoulder, um, so I think I don't even realize that I'm protecting it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, like just start just start your pulls. If you guys train together, start your pulls. If Fuad locks you into the position you want to be in, so you rise up and you set the weight together. And then you're rocking out to ranges that you can control while still rocking shoulder, right? So you're not having to work through full ranges and do all the stuff. Like there's all these adjustments you can make for yeah. people based on to, what it is that they do wrong, right? Do I have to touch him for any of that, or can I just no? I, I prefer I prefer stick. he did. <laughs> we'll get a hockey stick. We'll just pick it. <laughs> but you know, with your approach, my people probably learn the mind mind muscle connection a lot better that way too, because they learn how each individual muscle contracts. Yeah, or just like groups of muscles that like I understand my arm as pieces and it's not like I don't just pull my arm up and my bicep magically yeah. grows. It's like let's understand that like there's a sequence to movement here that's important for people intention, to understand. The intention right. behind the exercise, yeah. yeah. Um Ian, do you have to go or do you have time for a few questions? Oh, well, you're good. Uh this one's for Fuad and Guy. Guy's not here, so we're gonna use uh Mike. This one's a fluid and guy. Ever since you've retired, have you asked yourselves the question, how strong could I have been if I focused more on strength training? Mike, I know you were strong, but did you actually focus on being strong or were you just strong? Like, did you actually train with the intention to be strong or were you just lifting like a bodybuilder and you ended up strong? Well, I was just lifting because of the football background. I was like obsessed with being stronger, thinking that would correlate to me not sucking so bad on the field, you know. I just, I wasn't, I just knew that I had this whole mindset too, that if I was stronger, I would be better at the body. And that's why like my, the way I position my approach to bodybuilding now is to get people out of that mindset and understand that like bodybuilding strength is a byproduct of what we do. It's not our goal. Mm-hmm. Right. So if I, I naturally get stronger because the weight needs to go up because I don't have enough resistance anymore. Right. So I never, I, I focused on a hyper back then. And I wish I hadn't. I'm the opposite of that. I wouldn't, I wish I didn't. <laughs> I wouldn't need uh, a new shoulder and a new hip. I don't think my body was ever built for it. No. Yeah. Me either, apparently. Too <laughs> <laughs> injury prone to uh, ever have gone down that road. Yeah. Um, best ways to determine if your significant other is the one. Lee Priest answers. She gives you anal every time you ask. <laughs> <laughs> he said, and then he adds, a real lady doesn't make you ask. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was somebody else who said that. Sorry. <laughs> All right. On a more ser- serious note, since it's Valentine's Day, what's the best way to determine if your significant other is the one? I don't even know if I have an answer to that. Time. I, I, have, time. I have. I have. I have one. Time. Yeah, it's time. Okay, so it's a number of things, but I have one for sure answer. She doesn't try and change who you are or what you love. That's yeah, that's important. One. Number one by far, because I've seen so many fucking relationships where the woman is like, "Yeah, I love him," and then she's like trying to fuck with everything he does. 
I love him. him if I love him if he be if he's the guy I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. If I can I hold want him. you to stop bodybuilding. I want you to stop going on with these guys. I want you to. Like, yeah, you see, you course. see that happen to a lot of guys. Oh yeah, man. So many guys. And they and they do it because they they want to keep her happy, and then they end up they keep her happy with one thing, and then by the time they're done, she's taking away all the shit, and the guy's down here. <laughs> and they're just, probably and they're and they're banging someone else now. Yeah. So now you, you got nothing left. <laughs> So that's number one for sure. Uh, a close number... second is that you can fart in front of her, no problem. That's <laughs> yes. important for sure. I don't for fart sure. in front of my wife. I'm gassy man. I'm <laughs> Mike doesn't that's fart in front of his wife. Yeah. Mike, I don't fart in front of my wife. <laughs> I do. Not I've like learned in front of my girlfriend. I do. <laughs> I've learned a trick though. If I if I just keep my ass flat on the couch. I can I fart right, right into the- <laughs> You're not I, fooling I, I, anyone I, with that, man. <laughs> she's, yes, she loves you that much. She loves you that much to tell you she didn't hear it, but she heard this it. Is- <laughs> I put my legs together. I put my legs You're together. Two hundred sixty pounds. You don't think the force of that fart's rumbling the entire time? <laughs> so you're saying she's pretending she didn't hear it? Like, uh, <laughs> she appreciates the, the the effort. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> <sorry guys. laughs> you know, Politeness. <laughs> All right. So no, you can fart in front of her. That's one. Hey, that's a big one. You got another addition, Paul? I, yeah. I got one. Okay. Um, especially with kids, life can get repetitive and monotonous with like with kids, and you got to be good with that person. You know what I mean? Like, because things are going to get boring, so you better like being bored with that person yeah, from time to time. Got, but that goes with that even goes without kids, though. Like, I've been. I guess my, it does. You're right for sure. My, my wife for 16 years, and they're boring. To sometimes I'm bored. I, I was just relating it to like when kids are small and you got to put them in bed at early at night and you got to be home at night, you know, that kind of stuff. Like it gets monotonous and boring. You don't have the freedom to just pick up and go to see a movie or something. You know what I mean? I was, I was taking what you were saying more in a sense of a lot of people get into a relationship and it's super fucking exciting. And after a year when like the steal, the lust and shit wears off, they're like, well, my relationship sucks. I'm like, no, your relationship doesn't suck. It's called companionship. Yeah. You're not going to be. always. It always cracks me up when you see, I'm sure you guys see it too, like these couples that post like on their Instagram, they're like here, they're there, they're this, they're that. It's like that shit ain't last a bit. That's not fucking <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys, You guys are showing the world you're fucked. Because like, yeah. uh, guaranteed it's like need, a travel that they much. They need that to feel something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. see that you see it though. That's a good people rule. Are doing it. Yeah. You see people that's- that are doing it and they're real life, miserable as fuck. They have to be, <laughs> have to be stimulated. To enjoy each other or yeah. be around other people to enjoy each other. That's, and that's what fuck, I mean too. That's the fucking rule. If yeah. you can't hang out with the girl or girls, if you're watching, if you can't just be together without doing something special, right? Then you probably don't belong together. That's Neil what I meant. Literally home, on. home together all day, every day for a decade. Yeah, me and me yeah. <laughs> Like we don't work. We yeah. don't work. Like we're both professional competitors. Like we've just been. Yeah. At home, training, eating, doing bodybuilding life for ten years, you know, yeah. every single day, all day, on all together, all day, all night. Yeah. Ian, that vacation I just took summer on to Dubai. That's the first time we've gone on vacation since 2014. Really? Because we've been wow. working, working, working at yeah. business at the when I was still bodybuilding, blah 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 blah. Yeah. So now we're like, let's go and fucking. I made sure we did something different every day, just because. We haven't gone on vacation in so long, but that's awesome. it's the thing. We're, we're home. We're together. We work. We sit yeah. down at the end of the night. We're just happy. Yeah. Being here. yeah. yeah. My, my wife works from home now, so she's always here. You didn't sound that. You didn't say that. Like an I'm, good. I, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. I, there was, it took me a little adjustment. I got to admit. Yeah, but, Mike, uh, Mike talks to He's like. <laughs> no, I was just like. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to admit, I even told her this, you know, it was a little adjustment there for a while because I used to I have like. I used to have some weekdays where I, there, my kids would be in school and she'd be at work. It was nice, but uh, that's gone now. Um, but it, but uh, I'm getting it's, not, I, I, it's okay. It it's, okay. it's okay. I like it now. Yeah. <laughs> now what, would you do, what would you do on your days alone with no one around? Uh, you know, uh, jerk it off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you get a jerk off. Yeah. So tell me a good thing for me. I'm more productive now. That's for sure. I, get getting, I mean, Paul's getting the long jerk off win. You know, the, the hour long one where you've surfed like eight yeah. different portos. Yeah, and you can't, you can't make up your mind which one you want to use. Yeah, you set a up a drink. Time, you know, you get like a beer for a while. Milk it for a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Around the house like the tribal guys with no underwear on. Kind of wait. When is this thing gonna big. grow? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it growing? <laughs> Take some weights from it. <laughs> All right, let's do fucking 
one or two more. There's a just a one here that's like a fucking paragraph long. Yeah, I'll check that one. <sighs> Why get questions and you never read them? Well, first of all, your questions fucking two hundred dissertation. Like, what? <laughs> Look, at, I'm I'm gonna read this just to show you how like annoying this is. Nick Stewart one, you don't have to write all this shit, man. Just write your question. Uh, but he says, why get questions if you never read them? Maybe two, three at most, which is okay. And we all know Samson is your athlete, but even single what opinion you have now is by every single opinion you have now is biased. So you are no longer an objective show, just biased to your athletes. Well, don't watch. <laughs> I pay the guy a fucking living. Of course, I'm biased to him. Wait, wait, wait. There's also there's also at least two other people on the show every time. Yeah. Just stop what? listening to Fuad's opinion. Don't need to listen to mine. Then you're fine. Right. <laughs> My opinion is the best one, anyways. Fuck Fuad. Nikki Stewart. Nikki Stewart. I've been paying Samson for two years as my athlete. If you don't think I'm going to be biased, there's something fucking wrong with you. Of course, I'm fucking biased. That's why I'm paying him. I think he's going to be the best in the world. He also came from being a very mid-tier pro to being sixth in the Olympia within fucking 10 months. Yeah. These people like, are like, oh, you're only biased as your athlete. I'm like, no, he actually just took sixth in the fucking world. Yeah. In, in one of the best Olympias ever. And some yeah, people, people had him in fourth. Like, yeah. you don't like yeah. my opinion. That's too fucking bad. Don't want to show. <laughs> uh, now, carrying on. <laughs> Which is a shame because that's how you got your fans following. Now we know what your agenda is. Yes, I have an agenda. Your opinion no longer matters. You, <laughs> you, you, for the first time in any show, pushed pretty physiques over muscle mass. Why? Well, first of all, Samson is the biggest guy on that fucking stage, if you knew what you were talking about. <laughs> Samson literally stood next to Rami. Wait, but this is the thing. Like, wait, wait, wait. Samson literally stood next to Rami and compared. So I'm not yeah. I'm not saying we should have beautiful physiques only. The guy is massive and beautiful. You're right. They're also so, missing the point of a large point and premise of the show is you have four people here. We might have contradicting opinions. One person might say Samson wins the front double. I might say Nick wins the front double. Like, that's the objectivity of bodybuilding. If you well, don't agree with Fuad's aspect of Samson being as great as he is, well, then fuck off and listen to somebody else's opinion. Right. But, yeah. other, but the other aspect is, is these people don't listen to what I'm actually saying. When we went through the shots, I said, Nick had the back double. Nick had oh, the I'm, I'm, I'm saying even if you were being. Yeah, uh, yeah but, they, but so, that's you know, the thing is they don't hear that. They don't hear yeah. that. They're like, yeah. oh, why'd you bring up Samson again? I'm like, because I want to. Because yeah. I love his physique. And I think he's yeah. a great guy. And he's probably going to be on every episode from now on for the rest of fucking my life. <laughs> he's also, he's also, also going to be also he's also going to be a contender in any show he does. So he's going to be part of the conversation. You're not going to have a enough. conversation about the Olympia and not talk about hottie. You're not going to have a, sh a show about the Arnold, not talk about Nick and Samson. Like, what the fuck else? We're, we're not going to talk about the guys coming second last. We're going to talk about the top five. Nikki Stewart uh, is carrying on. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> uh, Samson, it's pretty, it's it's so obvious we all see it. And you try to persuade your hosts. Thank goodness Ian keeps it real. Thank goodness. Ian. <laughs> ah, Ian, there you go. <laughs> if Samson does this, he will win. Well, yeah, if Samson does this, and this, he will win. What is wrong with that? The irony of that last comment after what I just said is perfect. My question <laughs> Oh no! Now he finally gets. Oh, his... he got to the question now. Now he wants me to answer the question after <laughs> just... just shitting on you, just shitting on me for <laughs> the paragraph. Oh, no, he just are. wants mine. He already said that. My question: If Andrew, Jack, and Samson both come in hundred percent, Andrew has a detailed back. Who wins? Samson. Samson all day. <laughs> Done. Thanks, Nick, and for your question. Now, fuck yourself. <laughs> And I'll say Andrew, and now we have two conflicting opinions. Who's the fuck yeah. is he going to listen to now, right? No, he's like, got to be. At least he's, he's happy, though. Let's take a look at Nikki Stewart. See what. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, for, well, I guess you can like this kind of stuff. panties are in a bunch. Uh, <laughs> is it a guy or a girl? Uh, How's it spelled? It's a guy. It's a gentleman. Are you allowed to say that? Maybe he's, I don't know his gender. I don't know if that's, I don't know what my being. I want to assume. You're going to end up in front of a civil rights tribunal. You better watch out. Yeah. Soon. Uh, uh, Nikki Stewart won. Let's take a look at Nikki Stewart, see if he has any reason to be running his mouth. Oh. 
Just oh him. shit. He's got his pants off. He's he's naked there. He puts the pants on. <laughs> Maybe he's working on growing his dick. Hey, why is his hand like that? <laughs> What's his hand holding? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, this isn't me advertising my OF. Oh, I hope to it's fucking God. Holy fan. <laughs> Christmas damage off. What else do we got here? Oh, look at that. Oh, fucking oh God. Huh? Nikki Stewart, you brought this on yourself, brother. Yes, you did, unfortunately. Amazing. Oh, God. Seriously, got the hood on. Oh, oh wait. There we go. Oh, there we go. Uh, Big uh, sexy. Oh, I, boy. Had, I, had my, showing. I haven't put my shirt like this since grade six. I mean, he looks pretty good in those shots, so I got to give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's better than I do. He looks pretty good. I'll give him that. Let's see. Is this guy young or is he like 50? I can't tell. I think, I think he's old. <laughs> Hey man, that's racist. He, he could be like he could be like, 20, he could be like twenty-one, or he could be like forty-eight. You know, it's all it's all selfies. Like a teenager. I was gonna or... say it's all. You know what? You'll wrote, notice, you'll you'll notice that me. common that common theme of shithead internet trolls. They're all taking selfies of themselves. What <laughs> Roman says about selfies, right? Yes, I remember that. Every single one, yeah. Roman says if. The first 10 pictures are selfies. Your insecurities are so great, you're going to give it up. <laughs> it's like a Tinder profile. Look at this. Oh, holy fuck, dude. Dude, what are you doing? I can't. I might be biased, but fuck. Oh, hold on. There's a girl. There's a, there's a girl up there. Does he know her? Can't trust these. Oh, oh that's his Doesn't girl. Is that his? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, it's not his girl. He's just posting. All right, Nikki Stewart. Thanks for your comment, brother. But I'm going to continue to pump up Samson. So if you don't like it, don't watch. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> um, we can't. He's from the UK too. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Which is weird. Why is he He's mad at hating Samson? on Samson? Yeah. Why is he hating on Samson? Yeah. He's from the UK. That doesn't make sense. Racist. Yeah. They're um... everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A whole bunch of people already commented to him, told him to fuck off, pretty much. <laughs> 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 Uh, go back to the beginning of your career, knowing what you know now. What would you do different? That's so so many times I had that question. Uh, would you rather spend the last day of your life with your mom or your wife? Oh yeah, fuck, that's a fucking rough one, man. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm not answering that. I'm not touching. Yeah. Lacy, I'm going with the wife. Yeah, I'm going with the wife. Listen, I love my mom to death. Yeah, great. I'm not answering it. <laughs> Come on, Ian. Don't be a pussy. You're the real. Remember, he just said, Nikki Stewart just said you're real. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I'd call my mom. <laughs> no, sorry. I'm not picking. Paul? I'd call my mom, but I'd be with my wife. You'd be, but you can't. I can't call her? You can't call her. I, I think i got to take the wife then. She's probably more fun for me to be around. Yeah, you kind of have to pick your wife. Sorry, mom. I know my mom watches these, so. Oh, that's why you didn't want to answer. Oh, because <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to choose. I want both. But like, if you're, yeah, if you got to. Like, your wife is who you like live with and build your life with. It's different, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah. She's like your new mom. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> what are your favorite non bodybuilding channels or podcasts? Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah. Kevin Samuels, you turned me on. I love Joe I Rogan. That guy. Kevin Samuel, I got into Kevin Samuels pretty badly for a while. And I thank you for getting me into him. He's you awesome. Know who it is, Mike? No. Oh, no. dude. Please. Oh. I don't watch any, I don't watch but, any podcast. But don't no, watch him. Podcast. It's not a podcast. No. Go, go on like a YouTuber. Old black guy. He's hilarious. Yeah. YouTuber. But don't watch him. Kevin Samuels, this guy, all he does, he, his, his job so. is like a, what's his job? A mar marketing, like a, image consultant. Image consultant. That's he the one who talks shit to, to like yes. women and shit. Yes. yes, yes, yeah, I know what you're talking. About. They'll be just like, go... I'm 30. I have four kids with three dads, but I deserve a, a man. Yeah, with yeah, yeah. yeah. Dollars a year, and he's yeah. like, why? He, he, just, <laughs> he destroys them. But don't yeah, watch him and then hang out with your girlfriend afterwards. No, no. <laughs> I've learned that. They'll be like, what do you rate yourself on a one to ten? They'll be like a ten. He'd be like, girl, you're fucking crazy. You know? Yeah, I like how he's like, <laughs> rate yourself on a one to ten, but you can't pick a seven. They're all like six. He's like, so you're slightly above average. <laughs> I love that he says you can't pick seven because everybody would pick yeah. seven. Yeah. It's the safest. It's a cop out answer. Yeah. yeah. Um 
what the fuck have you ever gotten so tired lazy and prep where you just throw your tupperware out instead of washing them yes well i mean if it's the like fucking 99 cent ones maybe only only after traveling that i've done many times yeah like if i traveled somewhere 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 for the day yeah yeah yeah, i traveled yeah. someone ate all my meals like six meals while i was traveling and i got to back to wherever i'm like i ain't clean these i threw them out no i usually leave them in the fucking hotel i'm at like whatever or that I, yeah yeah i'll like no. i won't put them back in my suitcase and bring them home i'm like fuck. Oh, i'm it. sorry i'm saying if i like got yeah, somewhere yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah treat it just like your underwear <laughs> <laughs> one and done disposable <laughs> leave in the hotel fuck it <laughs> hey, leave else's there. problem yeah for the, for the I can't believe you said that. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> you, said throw, you, you said I'm going to throw them out. That's how we came up on that. If they get stained, yeah. If you end up like sharding <laughs> them, you just throw them away. You just wa- wash them. <laughs> well, Underwear? stains are not washable. That's what he said. If well, yeah, some stains won't come out all the way. Hmm. So I'd rather that stain be. We're going to go. We want to go over this again. No, no, no. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, wait, how many, like, how bad does that stain have to be? <laughs> how bad what, sorry? How bad does the stain have to be before you throw it away? Visible. <laughs> well, technically, <laughs> technically, wouldn't all stains be visible? That's what well, I was I, I buy mostly black boxers now. Okay. <laughs> well, how are you going to see the black boxers? You never know. I don't see yeah, them. So forever. They're great. They don't, they don't get dirty. Black ones don't get dirty. <laughs> But the stain's still there, man. I can't see it, though, Mike. I can't see it. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind, man. That's uh, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you kill it, Mike, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. All right, last one. Would you rather go to jail for three months or... Oh, no, that's stupid. Sorry, guys. I'll start over. Uh, blah, blah, blah. When nope. Uh, when you have a wedgie during cardio in public, what was the go-to move in public to correct it? To correct the side. You just you do the side step. I'd not pick it from the side. You just kind of pull your underwear oh, you like, pull, like you pull your pants from the side. <laughs> yeah, and then it comes out that way. I don't put my hammer at my butt and do it. I do the side I got, step. I got side a step. question. I got a question that's been given to me by my girl. If you guys want to hear this one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's uh, if you were your significant other for a day, would you fuck yourself? Yep, we've had this before. Really? Maybe, like if I was my wife, like if I had yeah, a body? would you fuck you all day long? I would bang. I would bang her. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no, if you're the... your wife. You have to bang you. Oh, no, I just fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> if you wait, yeah, if, so if you were your wife for a day, would you bang your me? Yeah. So if I'm yeah. summer, am I gonna bang? Yeah. yeah, if you're summer for a day, are you banging Fuad? Yeah. Yes, all fucking day long. Me too, for sure I am. <laughs> I, I just play myself all day. Play with yourself. All day long, I would, yeah. Well, I, I gotta, I gotta, make, gotta, know, I gotta, I gotta be, know how good of a job I'm doing. In no, like first, I'm gonna, experience. first, I'm going to bang the fuck out of Fuad. Then I'm going to make him bang me with toys. <laughs> I want the full. I want the full experience of what it's like. I would just be fascinated. And then you're like, at the end of the day, you're like, damn, that was a lot better with the toys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Ian and Nikki Stewart. Fuck you too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, boys. We'll talk next week. Yeah, we'll see. You guys. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Hey guys, take it easy. All. Hey guys. Good night, guys. Bye.